Welcome back to Kind of Funny's Harry Potter in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Harry Potter Cinematic Time. Universe. My name is Tim Geddes. I'm joined by Andy Cortez. Good morning. The master of song, as we like Good to morning, call it. Good morning, guys. Good morning. <laughs> so proper. What time is Good it? Morning. Good morning. Good proper. <laughs> what time is it? 22. All right, cool. We got Kevin Coelho. What's up, dude? The big dog. Hello. We got uh, Nick Scarpino there with the... Patented DC. Pour poor. yourself a little party, ladies and gentlemen. Pour up that we're party. about to go into the Chamber of Secrets. Yes, we are. Oh, my God. Before the show, we were talking about a lot of fun stuff, and I can't wait to, to see what you got in your Chamber of Secrets. USB Nick, and memory sticks. Today. Oh, my God. Davi and just. What do you think he's doing with the socks, really? You know what I mean? I so, do you think he's a Do you think he lays them out? <laughs> like 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 his victims, he just lays them out. Uh, what, you, like, what, what does that mean? I don't I don't think you know what you're saying. Twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, or you could get the video later on youtube.com slash kind of funny, or roosterteeth.com, or podcast services around the globe to get your favorite audio podcast experience with kind of funny reviews. Just search for kind of funny reviews, leave some good reviews. I'm like you. Review you. the reviews. Yeah. Make it songs. <laughs> wow. You're rhyming. Thank you. Wow. That's great. Thank you. Is that a song? Feeling good on this Tuesday. Okay, right. It was a beautiful song. Tuesday. Yeah. Beware, totally beware Tuesday. of death on Tuesday. Twice, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash kind of funny. You get to be part of the show just like Patreon producer David Mintel. Mind free. Frank. He's a magician. Mind free magic. Just Frank. like Harry. Do they ever call them magicians? No. Nah. There was For it. some reason, that's really funny to me. They're witches and witches. Thinking of them different. as magicians. Well, in, in the world of Harry Potter, there is a magician, but they're just fake asses like uh, that Chris Angel dude. He doesn't know oh. how to do it. Also, I believe that uh, I'm joking. I made that up Harry's completely. step, f- or you know, what's his uncle? His uncle mm. would talk shit about Burning? his dad by saying he was a magician, like when they were alive. Interesting. Do magicians, like, yeah, do actual street magic street magicians? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exists in the world. Magism. In Harry Potter, like, yeah. is there like a David Blaine of the world? Oh, I'm sure. Man, he has no idea. Then, man. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they I just, bet you. I bet you. There's still like, there's some people that are like, oh, that Muggle's doing. Like, I don't know how he does yeah. it. But he's good. <laughs> it's pretty, yeah. pretty good. That's what it's it's good pretty, Muggles. <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Oh, uh, there, there is actually a, a fun tidbit. I, I forget at what point in the series. It's not like street magic, but during the whole, they don't bring this at all, up at all in the movies, but. uh Harry's doing homework and he's learning like history, and it's uh, during like the witch uh, trials. trials. Witch trials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, wizards and witches would get caught on purpose because the torture was like just tickling them. Yeah, so the they fire. thought it was like fucking hilarious, and they would like get themselves caught all the time to like get quote unquote tortured by it's muggles. Fucking perverts. Yeah, wow. sick fucking shit. Dude. Yeah, oh, that what, sounds what do you like think? Some mixed stuff. What do you think their views are on Siegfried and Roy and the Tiger? Oh, I think they love them. Again, I, I, again I think there's a bunch of people that are like, oh, these muggles are fucking cool. Or, or like these yeah. like fucking morons. Why are you playing with tigers? Like, you know, do you think they... If you saw someone playing with two Wait, tigers, why are you like relating they had master in command of two tigers. Friends tigers of tigers with magicians. That's like magic. Vegas, they're just all yeah, in Vegas, she, right? Yeah, Vegas musicians, musicians, mm-hmm. musicians. Yeah. <laughs> but like, wait, 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 wait. Why? Today we're talking about <laughs> Chamber of Secrets, Harry <laughs> Potter, and the Chamber of Secrets, which I will say is badass name. Yeah, I'm all about that. Name. Released name. on November third, two thousand two, directed by Chris Columbus once again, the same man that directed Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone, depending on where you're from. Uh, also, Home Alone and its sequel, Home Alone Two, Lost in New York. Very good. Went over Very good last one. week. Uh, a budget of Hundred million dollars, hell yeah, and a box office of eight hundred and seventy nine point two million. So uh, a smaller budget than last time, interesting. Uh, by about twenty five million dollars. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder what they cut. I don't well, know. Well, they had less CG, right? They didn't have any uh, falling uh, kids. They just had a big snake. And that's easy to composite. <laughs> the falling they really do. A lot of the stuff was practical, right? Yeah. Just walking around in a hallway full of water most of the time. That's there's, pretty there's much a lot of water. Definitely Spooky a lot of water. water. Spooky water. Uh, and a runtime of two hours and 41 minutes, making this the longest movie you don't in feel it. the Harry Potter just movie by. franchise. Um, oh, you feel it. I felt it. Uh, Could have been uh, 45, 55 minutes longer. I'd been happy. Would have loved it. Would have loved it. Longer? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... I, uh, apparently, bear, correct me if I'm wrong, this mm. is the movie that is most accurate to the books. Uh, I would say both uh, Chamber of Secrets and Sorcerer's Stone are the most accurate to their book counterparts. Mm-hmm. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, those, were the, those first two, if I'm not mistaken, were the shorter books. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, they're they're both like they're around like, three hundred to three fifty pages. Yeah. So you can read really? them. In I thought that it was shorter than that. No, yeah. uh, the first book is three hundred eight, and then this one is three forty one. So yeah, yeah, you can read them. In you that. can see them literally on the shelf. You see, it's like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. Oh, let's get a little bigger. And then Azkaban comes, and you're like, oh, no, oh. Azkaban's, Azkaban's only like, close. oh, which one? Am I? Oh, Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire. Fire is just like a Azkaban joke. is like four hundred and thirty, and then it uh, it jumps to Goblet of Fire, which is like seven hundred. But then it goes back because because uh, Order of the Phoenix is smaller than Goblet. No, Order of the Phoenix is the longest one. How the fuck did I have? Time to read these. I was rollerblading. You didn't read. Cool. <laughs> well, they're didn't not that read hard. Read. Yeah, I read the first three. Did you I really? Read yeah. I thought you didn't read. Yeah. Wait. What do you mean? Back in the day, I read a lot. Really? Oh yeah. I thought you used to like the last time you read was like high school, and I just assumed that it was like. I mean, these Harry movies Potter. were before no, high school. I, I, but let me get there. So, but I assumed that you read like super, like a quarter of a book here. Half a book here. Oh, no, no. I was like... He's a magician. Harry man, Potter my, books are like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, man. Once you start that package, once it's open, you gotta eat the whole thing. You're eating the whole thing. The whole fucking Better thing. hope you didn't get king size. Woo! <laughs> I always get king size, homie. <laughs> always. <laughs> Before we get into the plot and all the, the fun stuff of this, like what, what are the th initial thoughts of this movie? Uh, I didn't like it as much as, as I did Sorcerer's Stone. I felt like it, it dragged on a little too much for me. It was a little, a little too meaty. I... Uh, there were several times where I'm like looking how much time is left, how much time is left, how much time is left. And uh, and, and some of it was because I was worried that Nick wasn't going to be able to watch it in time. <laughs> because you were like, you put on Slack, like, hey, let me know when you're done. And I was like, all right. And I was like, fuck, I got an hour and 40 minutes Oh, yeah, go. don't worry about me. I watch yeah. them in like chunks. Like, gotcha. so I started watching. I just need to finish like the last like 40 minutes. So yeah. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, I still liked it. Just I didn't find it as enjoyable as Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more in this one, and there's a lot more. Inf like, there's a lot more to the mystery and a lot of the mm -hmm. of what's going on that they unfold. And there are it does drag a little bit. Like, there's just moments wow. where we kind of come back from break and someone has figured something out, and, and it, it you know that happens once in Sorcerer's Stone. But here <laughs> you're just like, let's all talk. Let's all get in a room and just talk real quick because we we could probably figure this out pretty easily if we just went to Hagrid's house and made him fucking tell us what was going on. But uh, I I. I was telling Kevin, we were talking, I'm like, I'm probably the person who should render an opinion least on these because I just love this franchise so much. And I remember it's, it builds on itself so well toward the end that you start to see the, 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 the beginnings of stuff in this one that don't, you don't recognize at first. But if you know the greater significance, you're like, oh, that's so cool. I forgot they detailed that in this. And they, this is where that first got fleshed out. And like, it's just a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Kev? I mean, I, I loved it. Um, I feel like, you're starting to see hints of the lore and you getting backstory of people and it's like it's, it's just it didn't feel long for me and like we ended this movie and immediately we're like fuck should we watch the next one and it's like no let's stop let's wait um i it is it has its moments where it's not paced super well but mm -hmm. like i think that those moments pass and like there's like threads that are going on throughout that are like great, like uh, the story of the, uh, the blonde dude. What's his name? Lockhart. Uh, Gilderoy Lockhart. Yeah, Lockhart. So good. Where it's just like the what whole time payoff. it's like, ah, what a prick. And I was like, you know he's going to get it. Well, like, I know. They couldn't so have picked like it. a younger, handsomer dude. How dare what? you, Oh, sir? dude, yeah, Kenneth Bernard. All the girls are like, oh, yeah. I want to fuck. And he's <laughs> just like this. Dude, I he's love like this fifty-eight-year-old man. <laughs> First off, that's Kenneth Branagh you're talking about, the director of Thor. So how fucking dare you? Yeah. The how first dare Thor? you? Yeah. Which yes. Thor? He directed the first Thor. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it makes sense because he's also known for directing and starring in a lot of like Shakespeare, a lot of Shakespeare and stuff, yeah. at, like yeah. movie adaptations. Yeah, a lot of people say his yeah, Hamlet was stuff. the best Hamlet movie. I would, no I would way. Say. Mel Gibson oh, yeah. was the best. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mel was like two hours. His, I think yeah, Kenneth Branagh was good. like 18 hours long. And it was it's fucking so rad. Fucking so for me, Chamber of Secrets, the, the first half, I was like, all right. Like, I actually like this a lot more than the yeah. first one. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it's we're, darker. Mo we're moving quicker. It's darker. The kids are older. Like, they're still not there yet. But it's the next like, one they're going to get. There. They're, they're, and I, I can't wait. Because it's one like, they all get like, they, poof, like they yeah. get pubes. What was the it's Nick, like Why? Why? They become for like, the audio listeners. He made it a hand gesture as if like their crotch is exploded. What would yeah. he, he what's the hair. spell there? Uh, when Crotchia Leviosa <laughs> <laughs> nailed it, fucking nailed yeah, it. Thanks, uh, the first half of the movie, I, I was like, all right, cool. Like this is, I, I'm in, I'm totally in. And then at some point, like I, I feel like it's around the, the the break when they are all figuring stuff out. And pretty much once Tom Riddle gets introduced, that to me, I'm just like, it, it takes a real turn where I'm like, this is starting to feel super Monster of the Week. And 
it feels predictable in a way where it's like, all right, this person's going to figure out a little piece of information that like conveniently the thing that they need is always going to be right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And I get it's a children's book being turned into a a movie franchise, so I'm not going to be nitpicky about all that. No, you're not wrong about that, though. It just gets weird because I'm just like, without knowing all the things that they're building, it kind of just feels like a bunch of random things happening Mm -hmm. with characters. And I feel like this movie, more so than the last one, has a lot of characters that feel very cartoony and unrealistic. And even in the world that they built, where it's just like the dialogue that they'll have, it's just like, why would you say things that way? Or like, why would you act that way uh, with with how your your character is supposed to be? Uh, that I didn't really know so much in, in Sorcerer's Stone. But that was mainly the second half. And unlike the first one where it ended, I'm like, I'm ready for the second one. This one ended, I'm like, oh. Yeah, mm-hmm. again, again mm-hmm. that goes back to my criticism for the first one where like you hadn't been introduced to uh, Lucius Malfoy. But, you know, even with Draco, I've always felt like the Malfoys are just a little, I, I could I could do with a little bit more subtlety in their, like, sort of evilness. I don't need them to be, like, that uh, Disney Channel, yeah. I think I think largely that's the kid, though. I I, I think Mr. Malfoy, like Lucius, I think that actor's Senor awesome. Malfoy. Yeah. Uh, hello. He nailed it. Star Trek. Uh, he is from Star Trek. Yeah. He was great in that as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's the acting. I think it's just the direction. Well, also, like I mean, it. to be uh, to be honest, too, and I don't, I don't know if this is overgeneralizing with the whole franchise, but I think Chamber of Secrets is I don't is 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 sort of I don't want to say the low point because I don't think there is a low point, but this is a book that I think we've started like lay as a foundation, and then from here, I think the books just get better. Yeah, to be told. Um, what, what's our little thing? Is the Gre- Greg's not here, but worry not. Nick will tell us the plot. Wow, that was really good. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Wands <laughs> at the ready, everyone, because oh, we're yes. about to tell some motherfucking secrets. Okay. We start. <laughs> How big's your wand? How big's my wand? Yeah. yeah average. Thick, though. Okay. Real thick. Not, not that thick. Heavy. <laughs> it's a heavy like wand. I always say, I'm, I'm not going to reach the end of the tunnel, but I am good at apologizing. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, God. we God. start We start back at Privet Drive. Uh, Harry's up there in his room with Hedwig. Hedwig. And uh, he's starting to get crazy because they're not letting him out. And also, no one's sending Harry any letters, and it sucks. All of his friends hate him, and Uncle Vernon is a piece of shit. But guess what? They're having house guests over. So, Harry, you better not. You better keep that gigantic owl to yourself because if it gets out and goes down to the house, we're going to be pissed off. And Harry's like, no problem. Guess what, though? Shit goes down. Mm-hmm. And shit goes down in the name of a house elf. That's right. Dobby the house elf shows up finally. Horrifying. And, and Dobby is. <laughs> here he is right here, little fucker. Look at him. He's uh, so cute. He is he Just is a horrifying horrifying little creature. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we learn a little bit about the uh, backstory of the house elves here. They mm-hmm. are basically in, an enslaved race of uh, of but they beings. They like it. They kind of like Doesn't it. Seem like whenever they, do. they ta- whenever they talk badly about their I mean, owners, he's, he's got a bad owner. He does have a bad owner. Yeah. Uh, they have to hurt themselves. Uh, and and Dobby's there, and Dobby's basically sabotaging this whole thing because Dobby does not want Harry to go back to Hogwarts because if he goes back, horrible, horrible things will happen. Now, right here, Dobby could just be like, I'm going to lay it all out for you uh, and tell you exactly what's going on because I pretty much I seem to know everything. But if he does that, you get the the feeling that he's going to have to punish himself so badly Real he bad. might have to kill himself. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's fine. We also get, at one what point, I think he just, and I could have been making this up, but I'm pretty sure this is written into the script. I think he just has a <laughs> passing glance over to a sock and just goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> Why? He makes the same Stop look it. Snape makes when he Stop. looks at Harry. <laughs> 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 I don't know what it is chest. about how house elves and wool socks, <laughs> but man, they go together it's it's, like peanut butter is in your penis. Uh-huh. It's literally just this in one your... scene that happens later with a sock, and then never again do we see him have <laughs> yes. a sock. Yet you they decide what? to give him a sock. They put a sock in his well, I mean, mouth. an iconic material. moment. Is, yeah, this is an iconic moment with him. So was the moment after this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They didn't uh, show it. Though. Uh, of course, <laughs> we're skipping. We're gonna we're gonna try to move along a little bit faster. Clip uh, Dobby, of course, uh, floats a cake over uh, the guest's head. Smash it all over him and they think it's Harry and then he's like I'm sorry it's my cousin my, my, my this is my cousin uh, not cousin nephew he's, he's crazy. deranged yeah. it sucks I'm sorry <laughs> uh, and then they of course uh, Uncle Vernon bolts him in like you see him actually putting bars in the window he's like You're, this is what I don't quite get he's like to punish you because I hate having you around I'm going to keep you around forever now I still don't understand. It's like well, just like I mean, the, hopefully they I, get into it at some point. And also, no, I no, feel like they would have tried to kill the owl a long time ago. He he was trying to get it so that like make it so Harry doesn't go back to the school, so he doesn't learn more magic. Yeah, because they assume that he, he wants want, to. Well, he wants to cut him off his work. Well, they just, well, they, what just ask, ask, ask David that, Blaine's parents. Take him into the woods. You can't stop him. There's there's explanations for all of this later. I hope that, why they keep. We'll come with it later, but it doesn't matter because you know what. What's up? Never mind. Oh, go for it. 
Uh, they barely explain it in the movies, though. Yeah, that's true. They, they don't do a great job in the movies explaining it, but we'll cool. fill you in. <laughs> great. Uh, real cool, a couple little fun uh, Chamber of Secrets facts for you. Uh, the filmmakers, the chamber of Facts. Chamber of Facts. Yeah. Uh, the filmmakers had to build an entire new row of houses as they lost access to the neighborhood they originally used Whoa. Uh, for a private drive, so it's all a bunch of fake shit. And filming a Chamber of Secrets started three days after Philosopher's Stone finished. Cool. Well, that's fucking bullshit. How do you, like... It's Harry Potter, man. Well, because someone was probably well, I mean, like, that's probably it's it. Harry Potter. I want a billion dollars yeah. for you to use my house. And they're, and they're like, like, fuck, fuck it. You. We just build these houses, yeah. you idiots. Yeah. Wow. Dumbasses. Morons. You just build a suburban house anywhere. They did it in Lethal Weapon 3. It worked yeah. out well. Remember? Uh, continuing Remember? on, of course, I Harry's know. like, shit, this sucks. Uh, I don't know what to do. And then he sees it. He looks up and he sees a car flying in the sky. And who is piloting this amazing vehicle? The Weasleys. That's mm. right. Ron and Fred and George have come to literally break Harry out of his prison, and it's awesome. And I'm telling you guys right this right now. If I ever get locked in my room, I mm-hmm. expect you guys to drive a car to my window. No problem. And break me the fuck Who do you out. want to drive? Absolutely. Uh, Not Kevin. Uh, I mean, in this regard. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. You want to get the job done? I want. I want the job you done know? dirty and fast. So yeah. it's going to be Kevin. I'll get and it there's done. No, there's no offense to you, Tim, but last hey. time I saw you park, I think you're still parking. Like yeah. that's how long it took you. Uh, Andy, you're a lovely driver. Thanks, man. Hair looks great today. Thanks. Uh, of course, they break him out. <laughs> Uncle Vernon's like, shit, no, we got to keep him in. And then Uncle Vernon grabs his leg, and then Ron jukes the thing to the left, and Uncle Vernon falls Falls to his out death. the window. <laughs> Breaks his neck, dead. Credits Breaks. roll. <laughs> Love it. Uh, of course, Harry. Uh, they bring uh, Harry over to the Weasley's house, which we get to see for the first time, which is really, really cool. And I love the design of this house, because everything in the Weasley's is sort of just a little off-kilter, but still very endearing. Whimsical. Whimsical and, and, and fun. Sweet, yeah. uh, and this is, by the way, for Harry's first time really seeing a wizard's household. So we get to see it from his perspective, which is cool. He walks in. He sees the dishes washing themselves, the, the, the scarf being knitted by itself, all this stuff. And you can just see the look in his eyes of like, fuck. Like, I just came from this horrible place, and this is where everyone else gets to grow up. Life's not fair. I should be This evil. place has a John Williams score. Like It I has an amazing, amazing John yeah. Williams score. Uh, it comes in, of course, and they go, oh, cool. Mom put some food out for, like, mom made some breakfast. Breakfast already made. But, like, we're sneaking in, so just be cool. And you, let me tell you something right now, everyone out there. You think you're going to sneak one past Mrs. Weasley? No. You think you're, you're so going to fucking get one past me? You're fucking dumb. 18 children. <laughs> So many and kids. And some of them are twins. <laughs> you know how evil twins always are? They fuck with their parents constantly. It's They're really up. mean. They're really mean. They're really mean. Uh, of course, Miss Weasley. Just in general? Just in yeah. general, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ever met a twin? Horrible. Have you? Minnesota twins. Have you? Oh, God. Grand, apparently. Uh, of course, Mrs. Weasley's like, she's pissed, but she's not that pissed because we, we're starting to get a concept that she's got an affinity for Harry here. Like, uh, you know, uh, she comes and she's like, I'm pissed at you guys. Your, your dad's going to get so pissed when he sees the, the car that you took the car. And then we get one of the, the most endearing scenes, I think, of this movie where Ginny comes downstairs and sees Harry and just freaks out. Great exit. And then just goes away, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Um, I got a, little, a fun little thing here about, yeah. about Ginny. And uh, this is only fun because of fact. Fascinate.com, where I got a lot of these facts. Um, their editorializing is a little interesting. Um, Bonnie Wright, who played Ginny, got to bring one of her best friends onto the set to be an extra. Her other friends got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> why would you write line. it that way? That's a weird line. That's a uh, terrible way to write it. Uh, of course, we also get a very similar reaction from Mr. Weasley. When I he bet comes you in. that was one of her other friends who didn't get anything. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> funny. I wrote that. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Weasley comes home from having been called to the Ministry of Magic. There's been a lot of raids. Lots of stuff are happening. There's certain We're starting to get some grumblings that some shit's happening in the background, although it doesn't really get fleshed out in this movie. Uh, he comes home, and he looks, and he realizes that it's Harry Potter. And he has a moment, too, where he's like, oh, wow, you're you're Harry Potter, aren't you? That's And he's taken aback by it, uh, which I thought was endearing. And well, then, uh, it's one of those moments, because they have so many kids, he looks at him, and he's like, did I forget? Yeah, a ch- I that I have Which one are you? <laughs> um, God, we so get, many kids, and, and and you know Arthur Weasley, just salt of the earth guy. Uh, his Mrs. Weasley is like, hey, you got to tell your kids, you got to you got to yell at your kids. This is, that's the dad, mom, that dad, dad thing. Yeah, she's like, you got to yell at your kids because they took the car out. And he's like, did they really? How did it perform? And she's like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, that no, was terrible, terrible thing, terrible, terrible thing. Um, I'm sure there's some other stuff in here that gets uh, ex, uh, there's some other exposition here. But so hold on, I, I have a question already. Where the fuck is the Weasley's house? It's in the borough. So what well, is, is the borough? It's, so in, magic, it's in so the no, wizarding the, world, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the wizarding world and the ma- uh, and the Muggle world are together. They yeah. just have spells and shit so that Muggles can't they hide see it. it. So we're gonna get to like later. You'll see like uh, there's. So where's Hogwarts then? Is, 
Nobody knows. And nobody it's knows. Jesus it's just God. one of those things yeah. where, like, if you're like, there could be a, ma a magician's house or a wizard's house, like, underneath us, we would never know it because I you always, can't see him coming in. I was uh, in the same question. I'm like, well, they missed going the through pla do platform three. Well, yeah, but they followed the train, remember? Nine and three quarters. They followed the train? There's yeah, a, yeah like, but I just never knew how they actually ever saw this magical train. Mm. Are they a magic guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, they also, uh, also see, part in of the, the world, world of magic, things are different. <laughs> uh, but Tim, to answer your question, the borough is actually located near a like Muggle town. It's closest to Audrey Saint Catchpole, Devon. Put up um, on Google Maps. <laughs> I, that's not how that works. Guys. Um, we actually, anyway, sure yeah. it is. This is gonna be our forget forget everything you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, but it's but, magic. but if you're if you're in the wizarding community, you're like you're immune to the enchantments that go to the muggle stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you so would you, would you don't have to walk around all the time and be completely blind. Like you, if you're a wizard, you just you're in the know sort of. Does that make sense? Hidden in plain sight. Remember that little know. corner uh, like a uh, house by my mom's house that was like a little mm -hmm. shack that was the all broken one. down. Imagine if it was actually a giant like three story building. But we never got close because it was this broken down shack. Or it's a broken down shack and you walk in and it's like a mansion. Huge inside. inside. There you go, magic, man. Magic world. Forget yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dude, I'm gonna forget. There's I'm a great. There's a great moment here where uh, uh, Arthur asks Harry exactly what the purpose of a rubber duck is, and I love that because his, <laughs> his his job is to is to like muggle artifacts, things like that. I forget what his exact position is, but that's what he does for a living. Yeah, uh, which is cool. Uh, okay, so now it's time to go get supplies. They got to go to Diagon Alley and they're gonna use the flu powder. They're going to go through network. the chimney. They're going to use the flu network. Remember that because the flu network is a thing that, that keeps going around. So we're building that here. Uh, of course, you got to go in there and you throw the powder down and you say exactly what you're supposed to, like where you want to go with intent. Harry, unfortunately, says diagonally instead of Diagon Alley, which is the first how time. How did he fuck that up? Because he was I scared. Like it's a big difference. Also, it was the first time in, in the movies and the books I had written that I, that I realized that word is diagonally. And she just split it up to Diagon Alley for no reason. I was like, oh, that's really clever. And then I was like, is it clever? I don't know, J.K. Rowling. I don't know. <laughs> Harry, of course, pops set up in some weird, strange museum with dehydrated skulls and, and, and arms and shit. Hold on. And then, what's up? Getting a phone call. Okay. From? Hello? Oh, God. Hello, children. <laughs> Professor McGonagall. How are you doing, Professor McGonagall? I am excellent, children. How are you? We're doing good. I didn't know the Wizards uh, World yeah, had cell phones. I'm calling from a very public place on the streets of San Francisco. Great. And I'm yelling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's in San Francisco. Oh, Great. Whoa, celebrity. Of course I am, Andy. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> She's everywhere, Andy. <laughs> everywhere, Parker. Yeah. I've, I've come to award the point. Now that you've come to the end of the show, I'm here to award the output. We're 20 We're minutes in. 20 actually. minutes into the show. <laughs> Who got it? Thank you. You got the points? I am excited to announce 15 points to Ravenclaw. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. We're, We're ahead. ahead. We're, ahead up. We're ahead. What's up? Give me the Ravenclaw. Now, you mean this? The, the, these Ravenclaw points were earned by a young child named Nick Scarpino. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Now, you may say, how did he earn these? He earned these points early in your show. When he talks about the children's genitals exploding. <laughs> <laughs> this is you now, in San Francisco screaming this on the street. Now, I, I blend in very well here yelling these on the street. Don't you worry. Now, Do you think he's wearing the, the costume? He has a spell on himself. <laughs> the, the other thing to note about our rankings is we're actually going to deduct 15 points. From Kevin Dursley. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's not a house, but we'll allow it. We'll allow it. It's Gryffindor. You all know it's he Gryffindor. He loses 15 points. He loses 15 points because he still is not drinking from his Slytherin mug. He is still a slimy little Slytherin bitch. <laughs> 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 Okay. There we go. Uh, Took care of that problem, you know what I mean? Sorry about that, Professor yeah. McGonagall. Uh, Kevin, <laughs> stop losing us points, man. Yeah, man. Damn, dude. Drink out of your Slytherin. He's going to come back and just take Slytherins more are falling away. behind, man. No. It's, it's Gryffindor that just lost points. It's Gryffindor that just lost points. This isn't funny. Man, you it get sucks to, for you guys. I hate you guys. <laughs> back uh, to the plot. <laughs> back to the plot. Harry pops out of Nocturne Alley, uh, where people start immediately fucking with him, but thank God Hagrid's Scary. there. Uh, Hagrid brings him back over to the bookstore, where Gilderoy Lockhart is is uh, played by Kenneth Branagh, is doing a book signing of his work. Uh, he is very, very full of himself. But I'll tell you what, Mrs. Weasley is buying everything this guy Smitten has to like sell. Kim. She is 
thirsty. It's dry yeah, out there, ladies right. and gentlemen, and I need a drink of a little blonde Kevin looked man. at me like he wanted to say something. I was, just, I was just curious. What do you think they were going to do with him? I was really scared yeah, for him. Yeah, right? Because, like, something was going to happen. Yeah, something bad. Very, really bad. Like, he was not going to be the same after. Yeah. Thank God Hagrid was there. Yeah. Oh, what was Hagrid were, yeah, doing? They were going to do some bad shit. Well, what's Hagrid doing he was gonna, there? He was going to buy drugs. Stuff. Yeah, uh, he, yeah, he was buying. Says, I think he says that afterwards. No, he, uh, after he takes Harry out, he's like, uh, he was buying a. Uh, Flesh-eating slug repellent, repellent because yeah. they the they were fu- they were fu- uh, they were fucking with the school's crops, and then later he uses them for the yeah. matrix. Yeah, how uh, convenient, Hagrid. Right, yeah. right. Don't too believe convenient yeah. for me. Hagrid's back. I mean, look at. Maybe there's like a peep show back there that Hagrid wants also, to get out with his big giant. Peep. Barry, you know the <laughs> answer. What was the name of the place that he like? Uh, went into? Where he went into Morgan yeah. and Burks. Right, so it's not be. Diagon Alley. So no, it's Nocturne Alley. It's Nocturne Alley. I don't know why he, he went. That doesn't there. make any sense. Well, he went diagonally. So maybe there's just a straight line. I, I, I think like the flu powder just like didn't understand it, and, uh, understand what he said. So it's like when you like, talk to Siri, it just like yeah, it's like yeah, oh, go, this go is to what, how tall is Brad Pitt? Here yeah, yeah, I was where I found it's about like close enough. Tall yeah. Pitt. <laughs> 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 and here's diagonally, and it's like should I send him to Diagon Alley or Nocturne Alley? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Nocturne. Weird. I mean, Siri's not perfect yet. Magic Neither dude. is flu. Yeah. Uh, they take him to the bookstore. Yada yada. We meet Gilderoy Lockhart, who takes a picture of Harry Potter because he realizes yeah, Harry's a star mm-hmm. celebrity. And it'll be good mm-hmm. for his uh, his book sales of his copy or his book, Magical Me. Um, of course, uh, we also run into Magical the Weasley. Magical Me, great name. It's a great name. Yeah. Is that where this guy? I, the best I'm going to disagree with you guys here. I think Kenneth Brana fucking nailed I, this. I think he nailed think it he too. I think he has that like. Prince Charming kind of look to him, you just know what I mean? Just full of shit. But like a King Charming, though. Like, that's yeah, the problem. But that, he but that's nailed it. I thought he was yeah, great. Yeah. But, but like, he just doesn't have the look. Yeah. I, I think he's got that look. I don't I, think he, he has, has the look. He's not a young Tim, man. In, this in is... the magical world, yeah. you don't have to be great looking. You cool. have to be good at magic. You're right. You're right. Do you see what I'm but saying? But that's not why the little girls are funny over the UK. Tight jeans. He was wearing some tight jeans. Girls love tight jeans. Young girls love tight jeans. Always. Like the little girls love Jonathan Taylor Thomas and Backstreet Boys. JTT. Yeah, but you, you, you tell me George Clooney walks in and little girls are not going to be all over him? I don't think no, so. No, no. Man, they're going to be all over him. They would if he wore tight jeans. We already yeah. established that. Five God damn ago. it. Uh, going back into it, of course. Lanning walks in, everyone's drooling. That's a fact. It's just I've you, seen bro. it happen so many times. It's true, yeah. uh, Lucius Malfoy is there, too, and he's just a complete dick to the Weasley family. Uh, they talk a lot of shit there. Uh, we, we kind of, uh, this is where we start getting a lot of the grumblings of the purist wizard community, where we get to the Malfoys are purists. This is where we learn about they're... muggles. We can learn about muggles here, right? And yeah, calls her. You see her Hermione's parents in the background, like, oh, which I, I always thought that was yeah. awesome. That's so cool because they look back there and they're like just dentists or whatever. They're yeah, like, this is fucking dentists. terrifying. Just, Hopefully, no one turns us into slugs. Ron's dad is like trying to get as much info out of them as possible. Like, so rubber ducks, what's up with that yeah. shit? I love that. <laughs> what are you they're like, this dude's working? weird as shit. Yeah, come over to our house. We'll have you over for pie. Uh, there's a, a quick thing that Mal, that that uh, Lucius Malfoy does here too, where he actually does put the the book in in Ginny's cauldron. He picks that? up her used book, looks at it, insults them, and then when he puts it back, there's, puts two it back bo- there's two books. There's two books Whoa, in there. Very, very surprise, nice. magic turns. Water from wine. Magic. Yeah. Uh, onward and Slide upward. Hand. Over to platform nine and three quarter. Before everyone. we do that, there's the there's the badass line of Lucius Malfoy where he's like, let us hope Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. And Harry Potter goes, don't worry, I will be. Echoed at the end of the movie as and well. Both those lines. Improvised. Really? Whoa. Yeah. There's a couple weird things here. So when Draco says, uh, I didn't know you could read to Harry, who appeared like Goyle yeah. with the polyjuice potion, yeah. it was improvised uh. because Tom Felton forgot his line. And then <laughs> what I just said about the uh, Lucius line and the Harry line. Yeah, improvised. I don't think that's said until the very end of the movie, though. I don't think they say that uh, Say that in this scene. Well, yeah, I don't see, think it's it, it is at the end of the movie. I wrote a note that he says, mm. Let us hope Mr. Potter's always yeah. here. And he's like, Don't worry, I will be. Could be fair. God, I would Could be fucking true. backhand the slap the shit out of that kid, man. Great hair, though. Draco? <laughs> yeah. Great yeah. hair. I want to make it Draco. He's, he's, he's that's a good name. idea. Draco's absolutely team pup inside, dude. I mean, I mean oh, it's team X Blades. Yes. Blades. X Blades. 100%. Yeah. You guys are Without a doubt. a lot of franchises here, and it's Pata. confusing me, so I'm just going to keep going on with the plot. Uh, onward to platform nine and three quarters. Everyone runs through, but when Harry and Ron try to do they smash and pretty much murder Hedwig on this one. You see that fucking <laughs> point? I was like, what? No, I'm done. This was the final straw. That looked you really painful. Cage. It was terrible. Uh, so they're like, shit, we're going to miss the train. We don't know what's going on. Uh, I love that there's a little subtle nod to the guy that was the uh, train attendant in the first one. Who's just there? He's like, the fuck are you guys? What are you doing this time? Yeah, but imagine it from his perspective. 
He just saw a bunch of kids run into a wall. And he's like, what kind of bath salts are you two fucking idiots on right now? That you gotta, you, what, and why are you dressed like this? Why is no one asking these questions? Why are you wearing capes? He's why do you have a towel? Anybody? Like, they, they have matching wear, scarves. They, they, wearing they were wearing, wearing their very normal clothes They were wearing normal point. clothes. They change on the train. Yeah. No, why do you have an owl? They were, yeah, why yeah, do you have an owl? You got them that fucking time. They were using their magic to make everything invisible. They were laugh. So they're just naked. Forget everything you know, Kevin. <laughs> Forget everything you know. You do so know Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah, I was doing Ricky Gervais. <laughs> so their solution to this, uh, instead of just waiting and maybe taking the second train or whatever, or maybe or maybe again using the flu network and asking if they could just go, is to steal dad's magic car uh, and fly around. What's up? No, no, no. Go ahead. I know you can't do that, but you could get permission. Can to do you, it. though? I was going to say you, can't you can't. Flu, I don't I, think you can flu or operate in and out of Hogwarts. You but can't you operate. I think you might be able to use the flu network. Maybe. I think so. Barrett can look that this up. This is some straight up yes, like you can. fucking like your parents <clears throat> leaving you home for Christmas, Home you, Alone. This right? is also what it's I love home about alone. this. By the director of Home Alone. Whoa. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> John Williams. <laughs> yeah, John Williams. John Williams. <laughs> John Williams. <laughs> just dropped our walls. Not, not to say too much for future spoilers, but yes, you can use the flu network in, in and out of Hogwarts, but you cannot apparate in and yeah, out of that's Hogwarts. That's right. Okay. Uh, that a funny sense. thing going off that, Nick, of the John Williams universe. Uh, some of the music used during the Quidditch match was the same music used during the speeder chase in Star Wars 2 Attack of the Clones. Uh, that's, that's John that's Williams that. did the score for both films and apparently figured he could reuse some of his beats. Didn't even notice it. Didn't even notice it. I'm fine with it, man. Yeah. They could have just scored this whole thing with the Scar He's Star like, Wars I just picture like, scroll okay like, like scrolling through He's his hard drive like, this. Uh, I could fuck with this one, I guess. I, <laughs> I feel like he's it. sitting there writing new music, the rights, and then he's just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I know this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, of course, they steal the car. They steal mom and dad's car, mostly because you get that they like driving this fucking thing. Uh, catch up with the train. The train almost kills them, but it's fine. They decide instead of getting on the train, they're just going to fly all the way to Hogwarts, which is cool. And we get the great scene. The first time we see Hogwarts is them flying over the Great Lake in the car, and it kind of comes up. And it's just a beautiful, <clears throat> beautiful scene. Of course, they land in the middle of the Whomping Willow, uh, which is a tree that you'd think super dangerous to have on, on here. But again, Wizarding World doesn't give a fuck if kids die. No. Yeah. This is, this is this yep. is Darwinism at its best yep. here. Mm -hmm. You're going to get close to the tree, it's going to kill you. And then they get like kind get of walked. in trouble because they're like, oh, and they hurt the tree. And it's like, well, yeah, that's a dangerous tree. Like, really, the tree hurt us. I'm just like flabbergasted that you that, like you all talk so much shit about the Ents in Lord of the Rings. It's like, it's a moving tree, too. Yeah, but What's... it's not walking, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's Fuck just you. chewing there. And also, <laughs> there might be more story there. You just keep watching these movies, Yeah, keep right? watching the movies, bro, because unlike the Ents that come out of nowhere and then don't do anything. Complaining about long fantasy movies. I just Remember, <laughs> they spent uh, literally twelve hours talking, and then he's like, "Oh, so did they make a decision?" It's like, "No, they just finished introducing themselves." You remember that line? All right, Fuck. let's move on. Let's move on. So they, they. Uh, what I love about this Got also, you, bitch. is that the uh, once the car's free, it just straight up kicks them out and then pieces out into the dark forest. <laughs> Was I love you like where yeah. you going? You go to a party? <laughs> yeah. You know what I was like, I got shit to do. Get the fuck out. I got friends in the dark forest, other cars that we're gonna party. Maybe it's gonna be a car orgy. Oh god. Orgy. Like orgy. Randy's yeah. Randy's parents are gone. We're gonna yeah. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> raise us. <laughs> Meet up with the Chevrolet, Chevrolet cars. Yeah. <laughs> Not Chevrolet. It Chevron. always pissed me off that like when they started flying, they just stole the car, it took them like thirty seconds to be like, Oh, let's turn on the invisibility thing. It's like, come on, guys. Um forget this, what you know, Kim. Yeah. They, you know, they don't know. They no, don't well, know in, in the books, they they get in trouble because they have to. They get in trouble here as well, because they've been seen by no less than oh, seven you're people. Right, you're right. You're right. The, they get in trouble. The, how uh, the damage they did a lot of damage to the Whomping Willow, and of course, Ron has a great line where he's like, "To be fair, I think he did more damage to us than we did to him." Uh, and then again, Professor McGonagall. Mama's got to make that fucking second yeah, house dude, that payment. Gryffindor money, man. I'm gonna get you out of this. Uh, you're just gonna get away with attention. Uh, we're writing to your parents as well, which is a, for me was would be a face a fate worse than death. Worse than death. Um, they get out of it back. Let's see. Uh, how the fuck did I put that in? There? Oh, we're in Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Sprout's herbology class where we uh, learn about mandrakes. And guess what? Mandrakes can do a lot of things. Uh, their cries will kill you. But uh, if uh, used correctly when they're uh, fully mature, they can get people out of petrification state. Important it's for later. Useful. Thankfully, useful. because we'll lots of people down. get petrified in this movie. Yeah. Uh, back in the Great Hall, Ron. Um, oh, by the way, at some point, Ron's uh, wand broke as well. In this, it I think in it was, the tree, right? was it in the tree. Yeah, yep. he like snapped his wand, and of course they're too poor to get him another wand, so he just tapes his wand. What could <laughs> possibly go work. wrong with that? We also uh, get introduced to the just the dumbest character in this whole series, Colin Creevy, who I just want to just take and throw out a window. The the guy that's like half the age of everyone else. Yeah, the, oh, he's like a, he's a freshman. He's, he's a freshman. Well, you he's know, like remember year. in high school where you were a freshman and you were just a little kid, and then you came back as a sophomore and 
Like would everything you, was just a man. Would you be surprised that James Burke man. was that kid? Oh, no, in no, ninth no. grade, he was no, a no. hip squeak. Like he was like Barrett size. Like it was weird. Yeah, growth spurt. Pop, pop. Fuck you. <laughs> just pops a hair popping up everywhere. I thought you were going to say you hated the dude with like that giant chin. The kid with the giant chin. No, dude, that's just a British guy. Don't be, don't be a dick. Yeah, yeah the one who's like, don't be a dick to British people. Well, you know, when the, the snake, when the Harry's like talking to the fucking oh, cobra. Uh, and he's uh, just, I think it was Justin is the kid's name. Yeah. Yeah. Justin. Kid. What are you playing at? I had a party. Yeah. Having a laugh. Yeah. I'm having a laugh. <laughs> Uh, of course, Ron gets a, a howler in this one, opens it up, and it just starts yelling at him, which is great. Uh, then we get uh, we get, uh, get to the defense against the dark art, arts, and this is where we start getting the sense that Gilderoy Lockhart is completely full of shit. Uh, he unleashes a group of Cornish pixels. Um, pixies. Pixies, excuse me. I put pixels, pixies. Uh, actually, no, I didn't. Yeah, my, eyes just, <laughs> my eyes are just blurred right now. Uh, he lets them out, and they start terrorizing the class. And he goes, you know what? Uh, you guys can take care of this. I got some shit I got to do up in my, in my office. Uh, and Neville gets put on the thing. Uh, and then, uh, why is it uh, always me? Yeah, I know. I love that line. I was like, why is it always me? And then Hermione fucking saving the day. Hermione uses so a Mobulus cool. and it just immobilizes all of them, and the little pixies are just floating out in space. And then they murder them. And then they just eat their fucking heads. What I would do is I'd grab one of them and I'd stare at the other ones, and then I would just <laughs> attack on Titan it. <laughs> uh, scary. Yeah, like, look exactly like a Titan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we are. Uh, we then we move on to a Slytherin versus Gryffindor Quidditch match. Uh, where we, where we square. Uh, the guys are about to go. Oh, excuse me. Not a match. They're going to go uh, uh, do a special practice that Professor McGonagall has authorized for them. Again, just proving that if you're a good quit, a good good at Quidditch, you do not have to study. You don't have to do anything. It is college football yeah, at its best. It's college sports, yeah, and it's for great. Sure. Uh, of course, they get interrupted by the Slytherin team, who's also got a note from Snape because they have to train their new. Sli- uh, s- s- excuse me, Jesus, I gotta slow down a little bit. They have to train their seeker. new seeker, who is Malfoy. Draco. Let and me also, just say the they dude- got the Nimbus two thousand ones. I wow. love that. I love that so and much. All I was like, have them. Fucked Gryffindor. Yeah. The dude with the fucking teeth. I, yeah. yeah. The mm. worst ADR. Like uh, holy I like shit, Marcus. I, it could have just been. It just felt like a different human being was talking every time he opened his mouth. It's like, this is terrible, man. Uh, Malfoy, of course, insults Hermione by calling her a mudblood, uh, which is a very, very derogatory term to her. It's a woman who is not from uh, a wizarding family. Uh, Ron tries to come to her uh, to aid, but his uh, wand backfires and he ends up eating slugs, He's which is fucking gross. Slugs. Horrible. Dude, yeah. Horrible. I'd be crying. I mean, when yeah, is this going to end? You know? <laughs> Colin Creedy, of course, tries to get a picture of this, and everyone's like, get, get the fuck out of here, yeah. you little shit. Get out of here. You get petrified later. Do you think it, like they were like, oh, we forgot to unpetrify Colin? <laughs> well, and they just put him on a fucking train to Abu Dhabi. He's just a Abu Dhabi. Yeah, like Garfield used to put Odie on a fucking yeah. try to mail him to Abu Dhabi. That's what they. That's what they I, I guess I don't know a lot about the yeah, Garfield. Lore. Lore. The Garfield <laughs> review coming soon. It's always, always Abu Dhabi. Uh, they take Ron to Hagrid, and Ron and Hagrid's like, he's just got to barf him out. And that's what he's got to do, apparently. And they talk about the significance of the term mudblug, which is uh, which is just a really, really fucked up thing. Uh, and we learn, again, a little bit more about the divide between the wizards. It's like, listen, Harry, not all wizards are, like, nice. Uh, some wizards want wizard purity, which is ridiculous because there's not a witch or wizard on the, on the planet right now that's not from some level of mixed, like, you know, uh, wizard, non-wizard. And also he gives uh, Hermione a really, really nice uh, little... Like not, he's like she can do spells better than any one of them. Doesn't fucking matter anyway. None of it matters. It's just a stupid, unfair bias uh, that these people have. Um, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, so getting, surprised. Surprised. <laughs> getting surprised by Move your own. <laughs> well, I'm, try- I'm trying to do them in groupings, yeah. and I just just go with my lines. Harry, of course, starts serving detention with Lockhart, uh, where he's doing all his fan mail. And again, another great, great scene with Kenneth Branagh. He was like, "Is it doesn't time fly when we're having fun? Yeah. Oh, it's been just a shy under four hours." <laughs> uh, Harry starts hearing, of course, the voice that tells him to kill, kill, kill. And it sounds a lot like a uh, snake's voice, very, very yeah, slithery, it does. which is great. You don't get that right off the bat, but you eventually figure it the fuck out. Uh, he runs around the corner into Ron and Hermione. He's like, did you hear that voice? And, then, and they're like, no, I think it's, it's going to kill someone. Uh, they go, of course, to the adjacent hallway where they find Mrs. Norris petrified, hanging upside down, and a bunch of spiders and a bunch of water everywhere. And then for some reason, the entire school rounds the corner. Just everyone at Hogwarts is like, oh, we were on a field trip. We just came back, and now you're here. Uh, yeah, and I, I, these are the parts that I hate where it's just like, Harry, you did this. And it happens again later. You're with, like, what? Yeah. No. Like, I, I like mean, it's Harry so Keeps hard to the, suspend that disbelief, the, the next, especially in the scene that cool. But I like this. The because, blood on the wall, that's what I'm like. 
Oh, here we go. Uh, like, this was, is fucking tight. They, they explain it better in the books of why they think it's him. But again, yeah. we'll get to that. Well, but in this scene, remember, like, Snape's like, I'll be honest with you. Like, everyone's like, "Is that was it Harry? And Snape's like, I just think they were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. And for Snape to say that is like, it's a big deal. Uh, these kids didn't do this. Like, but a lot of people thought happened. they did. I feel like they, they think it later because Harry gets yeah. caught again. That's when they start. And really he gets like caught just holding a, the kid, too. Yeah, he gets caught over the kid. Like, like, maybe here's the thing. Again, you round the corner. You're down, you're down in Soma. You see a dead person. Walk the other way. Don't fucking scoop him up and cry over him. Just be like, ah. I, or I, you're I a magician. Know. You're a goddamn street first magician. Off, first off, first off. You can be like, I know how to save you. I Hermione's right here. I just, I'm here. I'm going like, to decide they, how dead no he is. Save them. This is a hardcore petrification, though. Except yeah. there is. Okay. No? They were saved. It takes months to, for them to... Why couldn't they buy just grown mandrake? You gotta roots? grow those fuckers. You can't well, just well, buy mandrake. Yeah, you can't sure go to the Home Depot and get fully grown I'm mandrake. I'm sure that they have their wizard of equipment. Here, the can Home we call Depot. them John Drakes? Oh, I was gonna Thank say you. the Gnome yes, Depot. Yes, we can call them John Drakes from now on. That's great. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, we're in uh, Professor it. McGonagall's <laughs> class, uh, and Ron tries to use his wand, and it just sucks. It backfires on him. Why does he keep trying well. to use it? Because he's a he's, he's a garbage, kid, dude. He fucking sucks. Well, no, I mean this time his wand is all fucked. Yeah, but then with the fucking when they're in the sewers, he's like, Harry, like shut the fuck up, dude. Dude, what? Jesus what? Christ, man. Uh, when did he do that? Yeah, I apologize. Bitch. I said there was no blood on the wall. I was you absolutely right. The blood on the wall said, in the prior scene, said the Chamber of Secrets has been opened. Enemies of the air, beware. Fuck. Like, the coolest Such fucking cool message quote. they could possibly have on a wall written in blood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Of course, in uh, Professor McGonagall's class, Hermione asks her what uh, the Chamber of Secrets is. And I love this because instead of just being like, don't ask questions like that, McGonagall was like, oh, I'll tell you everything you need to know about this horrible, horrible thing. Salazar Slytherin, back in the day, he was a shithead. And, uh, Total before, racist. Before, yeah, super <laughs> racist. And before leaving uh, the school, uh, basically he wanted to make the school uh, this this place where only pure bloods could come. I love that we're to be, introduced to like the white nationalists. Yeah, he wanted world. to be make basically. It great again. Yeah. yeah, well, he wanted to be. He wanted to make it a place where it was a lot more quote unquote selective about who they let in. Uh, of course, the other founders, uh, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, and uh, Hufflepuff, were like, "Fuck you, dude, get out." He bounced, but before doing that, uh, legend has it that he made a secret chamber that no one's ever been able to find, called the Chamber of Secrets. Down there, uh, a lot of socks, a lot of house elves, a lot of crazy shit happens. Oh my god! <laughs> Do you know what he did afterwards? Dobby. No. <laughs> what? Salazar. No, I mean, yeah, Salazar. I don't know. He what goes off and uh, meets up with Durstrom and starts Durstrom school. Where yeah, they were a lot more selective. Was that the Russian school? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, the chamber is said to be home to something only the true heir of Slytherin can control a monster. But no one's ever been able to find that. Who's the true heir of Slytherin? They start asking. It's got to be Malfoy, right? Because this kid is just. Blonde and white as the fucking driven snow, yeah. and that just fits the mold perfectly it's for what Salazar Slytherin wanted. Purity. And That's also, he's never done that. Yeah. Well, I mean, but they, but but casting wise, and, the, and she wrote that for a reason because I think she wanted to harken it back to like Nazis. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah that. sure, sure. Of course, he's also never said one thing like nice to anybody. Yeah. So. He also was a giant piece of yeah. shit kid from yeah. a shitty family. He's giant, giant uh, piece of shit. So uh, maybe we can trick Malfoy into telling us. I have the perfect thing. Uh, Hermione just read about this thing called Polyjuice Potion. And they're like, this sounds great. How long will this take? She goes, it's going to take a month to brew. And they're like, damn. At that point, I'd be like, oh, let's just go ask him. Let's just go like, <laughs> let's corner. Go bully him. Here's what you do. You pin him down. You hit him in the nuts a couple times. You go, you don't want to be hitting the nuts again. You tell us, are you the fucking the true heir? And I'd be like, Pata. And you go, and I'd be like, please Pata. stop hitting me in the nuts. Uh, <laughs> it's Quidditch time, ladies and gentlemen. It's Gryffindor versus Slytherin, which means it is uh, Malfoy versus Harry Potter. And Gryffindor not doing so well. They're down 30 to 90. Uh, all of a sudden, a rogue bludger goes after Harry. Uh, but Harry, not to be uh, not not to be thrown off the track, sees the snitch, goes after it. Get a very this is a cool mm-hmm. little little scene here where he's going underneath the rafters and. This blunder is fucking destroying everything, but don't worry, Tim. They got Expecto, Expecto Repair. Repair. It'll just repair everything. Um, I I will say that the the CG was a market improvement over way better. Well, the last movie. Well, well, I do think it's because Which is weird, it, it was wasn't cheaper. actual like animated characters. It was like, it was like real people, actual with just people. A lot of blur. So it looked a lot better, them, yeah. and I liked the choreography a lot more of going through yeah, the, the thing cool. and like the chase scene. Like it, there was actual tension there. Like it felt like there was real people, which was nice. And yeah. stakes and shit. Like yeah. That, yeah, and you get and you get. I think it's also heightened by the fact that it's him and Malfoy. Which was smart because they they had that rivalry going on and it was carried over to the Quidditch pitch, which is cool. Uh, of course, but, uh, but yeah, Hermione, she's ready to cast fucking spells and like move the bludger or whatever the hell, right? Yeah. Are there is is nothing sacred? Quidditch. 
You'd, you'd just be in the stand just casting uh, fucking spells. Again, like, we've already game. established that's part of the game. that people are betting on Quidditch. Yeah. Uh, the kids are having a big problem because they're not getting paid to play Quidditch, even though mm. they're fucking... Kids' lives are at stake. But reminder... The investors are all making money off of this. People have died playing Quidditch. No one actually shoots spells from the stands. Like, Ron is like, I'll stop it. And she's like, no, you're an idiot. Like, you, even if your wand worked, it wouldn't... It probably wouldn't you might hit, hit the party. Miss, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't know and then she doesn't do the spell until they're actually on the field and yeah. she like blows up the bludger. But she, and then everyone celebrates. But well, it's just like the bludger, the bludger was Well, they all but figured out the game, the, right? Yeah. Like the no, bludger's no, goal. No, somebody no, somebody, the bludger. somebody yeah. enchanted the bludger. Yeah, there was, yeah. It it's shouldn't not supposed be to chase after you. Stop, guys. <laughs> yeah, something's wrong. Again, like, <laughs> people guys. in the Harry Potter world love seeing kids get tortured. Yeah. Somebody's just yeah. back there like, oh, One of the linebackers yeah. in this NFL game has three knives on him, and yeah. he's like <laughs> stabbing people. It's like the, it's like the, it's like the beginning Stop of the uh, game. The beginning of Last Boy Scout, when the guy's running, he just pulls a gun out and starts shooting the, fucking, the defensive line. Yeah. That's a reference That's for you guys. You yeah. guys understand. Uh, Harry, not to be uh, dissuaded, goes after the, the snitch as, uh, and grabs it last minute. Uh Boom, we won, looks up, Bludger starts fucking just pounding down on him, right? That's, That's when Hermione comes. Uh, before that, of course, Harry uh, gets a broken arm. The Bludger uh, gets destroyed by Hermione, and everyone cheers. And then Gilderoy Lockhart's like, I'll come over and fix your arm. And Harry's like, nope, anyone nope. but you. Yep. Don't do Don't, it. And Don't at this do point, it. I'd be like, get, just get away from me. Yep. Because you're a piece of shit. Get away from me. But, but Harry's too nice to say that. Uh, of course, Lockhart tries and then uh, fixes the arm by taking all the bones out of the arm. And God. man, I want to. Th- I was eating during this. That scene. was I'm a like, disturbing oh. scene. Dist- yeah. Hard he just to see that. Bends his arm all the way back. It's like, mm. well, you're out. Of, you're, you're not in pain, and that's true. Uh, then he we was go gonna to, be all night. We go back to the infirmary where Madame Pofrey is pissed off because she's like, fixing bones is very easy. Regrowing them is a pain in the ass. You're in for a terrible night. And she mm. gives him that cool like skeletal Skelegro. Skelegro potion. Yeah. She also had plans that night, and like suddenly it's like, oh she fuck, now this going, is my night. Nah, she's to gonna time party. down. Her and the other nurses. Woo, they're going to go party with the cars in the pilots. forest. <laughs> yeah, they're going to fucking party. <laughs> <laughs> what was this, Rusty's house? Yeah. Rusty's parents are gone. <laughs> it's a raging car party in the forest. Nick, uh, fun fact. Yeah. It's Skelligro. Yeah. Made by the Potters. That's how they oh. made one of the one of the potions that made them their fortune. Oh, that's I did not know that. Mm. There you go. Mm. Mm. Uh, and of course, he gets visited again by Dobby, and we get it. Dobby has been just, he's the one that enchanted the bludger. And he was he's just trying to keep Harry away. Locked, Car- him, out school, right, Locked him out of school, did all that shit. And Harry's like, stop it. Stop. Stop, Dobby. Oh. Dobby just wants him to be safe. And he's like, who do you work for? Who do you work for? And Dobby's like, I can't tell you who I work for because I'll have to I had to iron my hands one time. Oh god. And that was fucking terrible. Um poor little bastard just keeps beating himself. And yeah. he's like, Why are you doing this? And Dobby has a great line because because Dobby remembers what it was like before Mr. Potter. Like Master Potter vanquished the Dark Lord. It was fucking terrible, and I just don't want any of that stuff to come back up. And again, he's like, just fucking tell me what's going on. And then Dobby disappears because they bring in Colin Creevy, who has been petrified, and he's looking through his little camera lens. And when they go to look at the film, it goes, poof, and Dumbledore's like, shit, that's not good. This film is definitely, <laughs> definitely not supposed to just explode in your face. That's for Mission Impossible. Dumbledore looks around, and he just disappears. Like, no, fuck Dumbledore, come on. You're responsible for this. Uh, they're worried about Later. the students because this is the kind of shit that happened the first time, and the Chamber of Secrets has definitely been opened. And oh, no. Oh, no. Later, though, of course, the kids are brewing the Polyjuice Potion up in the girls' bathroom. And he's like, "This is Ron's like, is this a smart thing to do? Because it's not a good look for two boys to be caught it's in the girls' bathroom. It's just meeting place. They're just like, hey, you know what? But they immediately Most explain it. it. They oh, it's the Chamber of like, Secrets. No, 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 no. Oh, it's Moaning Myrtle. Yeah, Moaning Myrtle's Morning right Myrtle's here. Moaning Myrtle's there, and nobody likes no that one because fucks she's in there. here. No one fucks around in here because Morning Myrtle just won't let you take a shit piece. She won't. Like, this imagine, girl, can't this sit girl down who's to take 40 years old. Yeah. Imagine, imagine this, everyone. I want you to close your eyes. Everyone close your Did eyes. Did you know right away that she was 40? She look. The actress looks like she's not, way older than me. I was shocked when I found out she's like 40. Here's what I want you guys to realize. Here's what I want you to do. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Oh, man. It's been a long day. It's been a long day. Hold this hand, Andy. Andy, hold his hand. Andy, where's your hand? Andy, hold his hand. Oh, hold oh his no, hand. gross. You go. You're so cold. It's been a real long day. You had burritos. You had chimichangas oh. for lunch. Okay. It's about four o'clock and that thing hits. And you're near to this third floor bathroom. <laughs> that thing And you hits. go, you know what? I just got to take a massive, yeah, massive you're dump. You're fill a bowl. I have got to fill that bowl yeah, full of candy. Yeah, out of the water. My dumper's going to explode right now. Full of brown yeah. M&Ms. Yeah. Yeah. And you sit down and you get your book. You get your magical book out, sure, and it's sure. a magazine, and it's Us Weekly, and all the people are walking around in their bikinis. And you're like, this going to be great. And it starts to peak, and who? Puts her stupid what head. To peak? It's your, you start to crown. You're creasing. You start you're to crowning. crown. The baby okay. starts to come out yeah, you know into I mean? the world. Gotcha. And yeah. who's peeking her stupid, bespectacled face through the thing, it's through the door? Myrtle. Moaning Myrtle. Ah, oh, governor! Oh, Are you having a laugh? Oh, yeah. And no, it just I, goes right back up there and it comes Myrtle, out. Man. Fucking sucks. You're not I supposed to. You're not supposed to. I get it. It's but it's like. 
It's it just it takes me out of it where I'm just like I want to turn this off. I don't like it. Well, and that's of course I you're supposed to feel at the beginning. She and sounds the like end a horny anime the payoff girl. that she is the one that died. died I thought yeah. that was actually pretty cool. We'll get there. Yeah. Uh, I liked how that was all connected. Why is she there? Because that's where she died. Yeah. Why did she die there? That's the entrance. Because nobody liked her. Well, uh, and again, we uh, even in life she was annoying because everyone used to make fun of her. Yeah, and that's why she was crying in the bathroom. Bullying is a real why thing. Why did they pick a kid though? She was a child. No, she, she wasn't. wasn't. I mean, I looked up her age. She's 74 years old. <laughs> yeah. No, really, it was like something crazy. Like she was, she was yeah, like 36 yeah, yeah. or something. I don't know why. I don't know why they picked her. I liked her. You guys are all fucking monsters. She looks like one of uh, my old teachers, man. We get a cool dueling scene. I was scene. shocked when I found out how she was. That Dude, legitimately this was. dueling scene, scene number two, where I was like, oh shit, let's, yeah. let's fucking let's go. go. So cool. We have this little Juan's platform the ready, that's baby. a little, every, they, they get up and do the, I'm like, hell and like, they're yes. in that cool dueling garb. Like, some Pokemon Stadium shit. Let's go. He's wearing like a a cape kind of, yeah, but it's, it's, kind, like, cool. it's over he one look, shoulder. Yeah, it looks so like, cool. a, like, like a, a fencing cape. outfit yeah. almost. Yeah. 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 Uh, of course, it's Snape versus Gilderoy Lockhart, and Gilderoy fucking just gets his fucking ass on him. Beats the shit and out of him. And then they have the great idea that maybe they should teach some of the kids some disarming spells because some shit's been going down. And, I, you know, maybe it's a good idea to arm these kids with uh, some, some defensive skills. So, of course, uh, it's Harry versus Malfoy, and Malfoy totally cheats and smacks Harry up. And then Harry gets up and just fucking owns him. But again, though. Teachers. Yeah. You know what? Let the kids fight. I, but see, this is what we need yeah. now, okay? Toughen these kids up by letting one of them die. <laughs> Just let them die, you know what I, I mean? Snape Harry the- Potter, let's let this legendary dude that we're so stoked to be here that's probably, you know, raising the, the money of the entire area around Hogwarts. Oh, yeah. And they're just like... Let's put him up against the little shithead that's obviously a bad guy. But it, you know, let what? him do whatever he wants. But it's the rivalry everyone wants mm-hmm. to see. You have to imagine these kids don't have much in the way of like stimulation in this fucking this place. This is Duke, the North books, Carolina, all the man. paintings can see him. They can't. They're not out there trying to. They can't do drugs. All they have is a duel to the death. Yeah, once you a think, day. You think the paintings yeah. are snitching on them doing the paintings drugs? Paintings are totally snitching. They're going to each other. They gossip all around. Yeah, that's little true. fuckers. Uh, uh, wait, real quick. I, I just felt like the the pairing was perfect. Uh, like with the teachers, not like. Or not reacting, just in the sense that like Snape is just like fucking hurt him, dude. And the other guy was like, "No, hey, don't do that." But just no one respects him, you know. <laughs> it's true. Like he was like, but also like we- no, only, only only these spells, and it just everyone just ignored him. But also remember this: there was a rogue bludger that got in, that got someone put a spell on that totally broke Harry's arm, and no one cared. No, I was like, oh, it's yeah. just part. Of, it's, hey, hey, rub some dirt on right. it, buddy. Rub yeah. some dirt on yeah. it. Figure it out. Tough as fucking Forget nails these wizards you know. are. Uh, who, who cursed the bludgeon? <laughs> who cares? Yeah. Well, well, it exploded, we'll so there's no way to know. Out of we'll no way to know. <laughs> uh, Who's this little guy? Little last but certainly not least, of course, Malfoy shoots out a cobra snake. It's so a weird <laughs> move. It's a weird awesome. move. I mean, you'd freak out. Like, ah, ah. It, it was probably uh, like a spell he had like saw or something and yeah. didn't know what it He's did. like, you know what would be badass? He's like, the order that he learned... Different spells. He was like, it, I'm Lingardia Leviosa. Mm-hmm. Now I want to make a snake. I want to summon a snake. And what was it that he said? Serpent Sorpsia or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something something summon cool. is something or other. I'm like, it's dope as fuck. Go yeah, for it. Yeah, it was man. really cool. Snake it but up. again, a bad move to do. <laughs> like, here's a creature <laughs> that, like, hopefully he's going to go to you. Yeah. Oh, shit. You speak snake? That sucks. And that's the point of this scene, of course, is that the, the snake looks over. I think the character's name is Justin, but I could be wrong. And it's like, I'm going to attack him. And then Harry goes, Sazo, Sazo, Sazo. And everyone's like, oh, Harry's the fucking devil. Yeah. Harry is yeah. Beelzebub, yeah. is what he is. I think uh, it's weird that, like, uh, he talks to the snake before the snake, like, goes after Justin. And then the next scene, he's like, I only told the, like, I only told the snake to, like, stop going after Justin. It's like, no, you were like, yeah, definitely talking to like. the snake that's before the snake even but, looked at Justin. Well, what's, what's cool about it is you guys have Harry, subtitles on when you what's that? watch it? No. Did you have the subtitles? No, did you? Did it say Crazy it? shit. Yeah. Did it really say no, what? I'm not. I didn't do anything funny. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck, you got us. You got us. <laughs> now, I know this is uh, Barrett's thing, but I just want to say, like, there is one small, like, line that was taken out from the book, like, that like they didn't include, where it was right before this all happens, that kid is talking about how he's a mud bug. Mud, 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 mud blood. Yeah. Oh, I was like, it's a piece of shit. No, no, not a, What? The kid no, was no, a piece of shit. The kid is saying that his parents are oh, okay, I get muggles. Because everyone's going after the mudbloods. Yeah, yeah, and he's like, sense. I'm worried. And he like tells Harry. And then immediately after, Harry talks to the snake. And he's like, oh, fuck. I'm going to die. I'm, I'm for being sure going to die. Yeah. Of course, Another a, moment of why people think that Harry is yeah. Uh, yes, Arizona. because Salazar Slytherin was a parcel mouth. Uh, and he could parcel talk to tongue. snake. Parcel tongue. No, he's yeah. called a parcel mouth. Yeah, he, they he speak got The language is parcel. Oh, there you go. Tongue. Excuse me. 
had to look at that. My bad. You like, nailed it, dude. Uh, you nailed him is what I mean. Yeah. Fucking nailed him to the wall, him. man. You can't come after me. Oh, sorry, Barry. <laughs> Tuesday. Uh, this is bad because everyone's going to think you're the guy who's killing everyone, Harry. And this is why the next scene uh, sucks so bad because Harry, again, walking the hallways a lot at night. At this point, I'd be like, I need everyone to walk with me. Hey, Harry, you're on lockdown. Yeah. You know what I mean? Harry, you're, you're not, not going out of your room. We're, we're uh, watching you. On the way back to the common room, finds nearly headless Nick and the kid that he had talked shit about. Uh, or or uh, tried to save from the snake. I think Justin is his name. Uh, yep. He's petrified. Uh, and there's another trail of water and spiders. And Phil squeals on him this time. He's like, you're going to get it this time, kid. I'm going to fucking But put also, you he was like there. grabbing his leg. It's like, bro, don't touch him. Like, if you see a petrified, just raise your hands, back up, and start right. yelling, hey, there's a body here. You know? Uh, they take him to Dumbledore's office. Uh, and they use the word Sherbert Lemon to get up there, which I thought was cool. Yeah. Uh, we see all the Why? posters from the pla- past headmasters. He likes candy a lot, and that's yeah. always his password to go into his things, different candies. Yeah. Cool. There you go. Uh, we see uh, all the past headmasters in the paintings, which is always, which is cool. Uh, and then, of course, we see the sorting hat. And Harry's like, yo, dude, you fuck up or what's we up? We good? What's up? What's up? He's like, oh, it would have been great. We would have been great as a Slytherin, Harry. Maybe you're a Slytherin. We don't know. Uh, we also get introduced to Falks. The phoenix, who then bursts into flames and freaks the fuck out of Harry like he broke his bird. And he's like, oh, thank and Dumbledore comes around. And he's like, no, 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 he's a phoenix. Uh, phoenixes do that. They die. And then they get reborn in the ash. Uh, a couple things about phoenixes. We're just going to put a couple throwaway lines in here for the end. Uh, one, they can carry a lot of weight. And two, their tears heal shit. Yeah. Just FYI. Just FYI. Not <laughs> the best storytelling, JK. No, no, definitely no, not. No, definitely but not. Love the look of this thing. I yeah. was like, yeah. I'd buy you this. Do? Oh, I hate yeah. the way it looks. The, but I mean, it, it looks real. Like, it looks like a yeah, like, but like, I when love the practical baby coming of it. out of the ash. I was like, it looks all gross. The practical Phoenix look a lot better than the practical fucking snake. Yeah, oh, yeah. The cobra? <laughs> Are you talking about the cobra? Yeah, at the end. Uh, the, oh, the, 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 the big basilisk. old basilisk? Uh, Dumbledore, yeah. of course, is like, Harry, you got some shit to tell me. And Harry's like, no, nah, man, everything's cool. We're I'm cool. definitely We're not going to sneak next into the sliver in the common room and try to fucking con another kid out of out of some secrets. I, I, I'm good. Don't, I don't understand why he's not like, hey, you know what? So it turns out, like you may have heard, I speak uh, snake. And I keep hearing things in the wall. I know that sounds weird. People are telling me that, like, that's still weird. But I really respect you. Yeah. And it seems like... Maybe I should tell you these things. But then we wouldn't get the next cool fun scene where they have to steal hair from people uh, via floating cupcakes. And then uh, they make the Paula Juice Potion. And Hermione's like, I already have my hair. I got it from this girl's robe. What could possibly go wrong with this one? They make the Paula Juice Potion and something goes wrong. And Hermione's like, I'm not... I can't do this. I can't I can't go with you guys. You guys have to go alone. Some cat uh, people. He meet, they meet up with Malfoy, who takes them to the dopest common room on the fucking planet. <laughs> I'm just going to say this. If I was a Gryffindor and I went to the Slytherin common room, I was like, wait, they get all these ni- this nice natural slate walls and like this cool like subterranean feel. Like This is the party common room. They have like, iPads. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? They have the internet? Yeah. Yeah, this is crazy. I mean, that makes sense because like, you know, Malfoy is, I'm sure, giving more money to... Sure, yeah, yeah, you got the big you know? super pack of money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Malfoy, of course, is not the the heir. He was like, I don't know who it is, but whatever. I've told you that yesterday. But I want to shake his hand. I like this scene. I like. I, I, I'm like. I like Harry doing the, the crab voice and all that. And yada yada yada. Of course, uh, they start to turn back. They start freaking out. They run out. Uh, they meet back up with Hermione, and yes, it was in fact cat hair, and she is a cat. And it was, and nobody again, nobody asked questions as to why she turned herself into a cat. It's just going to take a couple weeks to get that out of her. Uh, so the guy, the boys are on their own for a little bit. Uh, I, I appreciated the reveal because that was yeah, one of those things where I was like, when they first showed her with the hair, I'm like, that was a little too easy. And when that happened, when she all freaking out, I was like, oh, I can't come out. I'm like, what, what are they going to do here? Didn't mm-hmm. expect a cat. Cat. Liked that. Uh, hubris. Hermione. Hu- hubris. Hermione. Uh, this next part, uh, Harry finds, uh, the, the, the bathroom flooding, uh, goes back up to the morning Myrtle bathroom and finds the diary. Uh, this is the first time he sees that looks in the back and it says Tom Mulvolo Riddle. Uh, it's, Marvolo. It's, Marvolo. Sorry, thank it's you. Close enough. Marvolo. Riddle. Uh, Marvolo. On the back. Uh, takes Man. it back to the common room, opens it up, nothing's in there, and then he uh, puts a little dollop, dollop of ink in it, and it disappears, and he gets the bright idea, hey, maybe if I write in this thing, it'll talk back to me, and he does. He goes, my name's Harry Potter. He's like, hey, Harry Potter, nice to meet you. You ever taken a shit in the third floor bathroom? <laughs> Man, that mortal's mortal terrible. She'll make that thing go right back up into your lower intestine. Uh, says, hey, man, can you tell me anything like... Uh, He's like, what's, he's like, what's your name? He's like, my name's Harry Potter. He goes, my name's Tom Riddle. And he goes, can you tell me Tom Riddle? This? There's no possible way there's some riddle involved with exactly. this. Exactly. No there's way. no way there's more to unpack in this one. No. Uh, he asks about the Chamber of Secrets. And then he says, yeah, I know about it. And he's like, can you, can you tell me about it? He goes, I can't tell you, but I can show you. It's like, whoa. Harry gets sucked back into a really cool flashback. And I like the style here because Harry's the only thing in color and everything else is like a sepia tone, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Uh, we meet Tom Riddle and he's young and Dumbledore does not like him. 
You can tell right off the bat mm-hmm. he's very suspicious of him. Uh, people have been, uh, they're carrying out a, a girl's body. Someone has died because of the Chamber of Secrets. Uh, Tom is like, I think I know who it is. He's like, wait a minute. Are you telling me that because someone died, they're going to close the school down? I don't have any place else to go. I don't like my family. I don't want to go home. I can't have this. I know who the person did it. And he goes and he finds a young Hagrid. And Hagrid has something in a box. And then Tom tries to kill the thing in the box. And a giant fucking terrifying spider crawls out. And at this point, I'd be like, Hagrid, just stop. Just be cool with yeah. just fantastic with these things. You know? Stop with them. Uh, of course, this is where we get a little bit of really sad backstory for Hagrid is that he was, in fact, a member. He was going to Hogwarts and then got kicked out because of this shit. And it's so sad. And we then, shouldn't have you know what it is? a now dog-sized spider. Like, it, regardless his... of it not being like, it, uh, sure, it wasn't his fault. That's he true. got kicked out unjustly. Sure. But also don't have a fucking dog-sized spider. Just don't. Just, yep. No reason to have that. Been saying that since yeah. day one. But also, now that his name is cleared at the end of this movie, like, why didn't they let him finish class? Like, reinstate he wasn't him. good. They were kind of just like, hey, just use this. But, like, this. give use him a one. Let him get a hybrid. real one. Why is he still using his goddamn umbrella? Like, I always feel bad for him. <laughs> Fun fact, yeah, the uh, the tip of his umbrella is, like, a little bit of that's his uh, broken wand. No. Unsubstantiated rumor, guy. That's something from directly. Unsubstantiated. <laughs> this is the, we, go, the great, we get the, 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 the great scene where we bear. get the, no! Why did they do that? I don't know. It was bad. What yeah. happened? Where he yells at Hagrid. Hagrid. Just like, Hagrid, no. And like, it kind of like comes out. And yeah. just like, this looks horrible. And yeah. also like <laughs> weird as fuck. It's last time but we then Harry this. comes out of it. And he's like, whoa. Whoa. It was very weird. Well, he like gets out of it. And he's like, oh, Hagrid's, Hagrid's the bad guy. So he goes to try to get Hagrid, and Hagrid's like, I'm too busy, I got, I got this slug-eating potion a lot that's going to help these ma- the mandrakes. And when the mandrakes are fully, it's going to take a while, but they're almost fully mature, we'll chop them up and unpetrify people. We can't do that just yet because Harry has to solve the mystery, not the petrified people. Uh, Neville comes to get him, someone has ransacked Harry's bed, uh, and then they've stolen the diary back, so the diary's gone. Quidditch time, baby, they go out to do Quidditch, but guess what, it's been cancelled. And then it's because, hey, Ron and Harry, come with me. Unfortunately, uh, they take her to the infirmary. It take them to the infirmary, and Hermione has been petrified. And there's a scene here so where Harry petrified. touches her hand where the fucking heat is palpable. You can what? feel it, baby. No. Harry and Hermione, no. definitely going to be a thing. No, Harry and definitely Hermione, not. So as soon as it grows, they're, they're going to start touching each other. Not, it's going to be fantastic. That's not the case. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, you got to love when he makes himself <laughs> laugh. Uh, there's new rules, of course. Uh, in, in effect, you can't leave the Gryffindor common room unless you are going to class. Uh, and guess what? If the culprit hasn't been caught, the school's probably gonna have to close, and they're gonna have, then they're gonna have to take Hagrid. Will the school close? We'll have to find out in just a second. Because this episode of Kind of Funny in Review is brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies is here to change your underwear. <laughs> Not literally, <laughs> but it's here to change the way you think about it. They believe undies shouldn't take themselves too seriously. They believe undies should be soft, fit every booty like it was made for every booty, and offer fun patterns that give you the freedom to express yourself. I'm wearing some uh, Tim Getty skin-colored ones today. Probably the least fun. Uh, no, please don't show me. Show oh, me. yeah, it's your wow. skin color. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. They nailed your um, color. also believes that every woman should have the freedom to wear whatever they want, whatever cut they want, in whatever color they want, and whatever size they want. So, ladies, rejoice. The Feel Free Collection is here. Miyandi size tested these five new silhouettes on every body type with an ultra soft feather light waistband that provides zero restrictions. These undies will be the best thing that's ever been on your body. Uh, offered in sizes extra small all the way up to 4XL. That's four X's and then an L. Uh, the new Feel Free Collection offers an ultra soft waistband that maximizes comfort with a weightless feel designed with you in mind. They don't just have undies, people. They also have super soft and comfy onesies and loungewear. Perfect for lounging. I lounge every night in these things. I love those Big goddamn fan of onesies. Uh, I usually I wear my undies and then I wear the loungewear. He wears his undies at, at night. night. Tim so wears his so he undies. can lay around in undies and loungewear. To get your 50% off your first you pair of free shipping and a 100% satisfaction fun. guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash morning. That's MeUndies.com slash morning. Change your underwear. Change the world. Also, shout out to Hims. Summertime's here. Well, you may be breaking out that baseball cap for a day at the beach or the ballpark. If you're wearing it to hide thinning hair, you may not have to anymore. Right, Andy? Right, right Nick? You oh, guys yeah. have been using Hims for a very long time, years at this point. Um, why do guys turn to weird solutions or do nothing when they can turn to medicine and science? Right, Kev? No yeah. snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Prescription solutions backed. 
By science. By science. Thank you. Thank you. No like waiting rooms. No awkward in-person doctor you visits. You can save hours by going to 4 It's so easy. You just answer a couple questions. The doctor will review and prescribe you what you need. Products are shipped directly to your door. Very discreet. Very functional. Uh, listeners, you guys can get a trial month of Hims for just $5 today, right now, while supplies last. You can see the website for full details and safety information that will cost hundreds if you go to a doctor or pharmacy. So don't do that. Go to 4 slash KFMS. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash KFMS. 4 com slash KFMS. Keep your hair. And finally... Shout out to Upstart. As most of us have found out the hard way, getting into debt is easy. Getting out, it's a little bit harder, especially if your FICO score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score and offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Greg always talks about the story he had, Greg Miller, uh, back when he had the credit card he didn't realize he had for a long time and it messed up his credit. Professor like, McGonagall. But then got the Professor <laughs> McGonagall herself had yeah. some issues with uh, with the, her FICO score. Uh, Upstart goes beyond the traditional FICO score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you and they understand that. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes without affecting your credit score. And the best part, once the loan's approved, most people get it the very next day. Wow. How about that? How about that? Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, student loans, fund their wedding, or just to make a large purchase, like a cool TV. You know what I'm talking about, Andy? You could have a cool TV, like too. Andy, your TV sounds sucks. system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Nice. Free yourself from right. the burden of high interest Next credit card debt by like consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart's ranked number one in the category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash morning to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit. That's U-P-S-T-A-R-T dot com slash morning. Upstart.com slash morning. Did they close down Hogwarts, Nick? They are getting close. Uh, the kids go to talk to Hagrid and they start talking to him. But guess what? Uh, Professor Dumbledore and Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic himself, show up to take Hagrid away. Of course, Lucius Malfoy's there as well. The kids are wearing the cloak of invisibility, so no one knows they're there. But somehow Dumbledore is just a fucking G and totally understands what the, that the kids are there. He figures it out uh, as they're being taken away. He goes, you know what? Uh, he says this kind of out loud, but then kind of looks over the guy and says, help will always be given in Hogwarts to those who ask for it. And then looks directly at Harry. Harry's like, ah, he can see me. And then, uh, I'm talking to you, Potter. I'm talking to you. I'm talking, are you talking to me? Have not. Uh, Hagrid, of course, is like, oh, that's a great idea. Uh, I will be subtle too. And just is like, hey, if anyone's looking for some stuff, all they have to do is follow the spiders. That's it. Uh, just follow also the spiders. Feed, the, feed my dog. <laughs> also, yeah, don't forget, to, someone has to feed Fang while I'm away. So they take Fang with them, which I love. That's that was really fun funny. stuff. Was really uh, funny. They, of course, follow the spiders into the dark forest, into a cave where they meet Aragog, uh, who is now huge. Fucking enormous. Way car bigger. Size. Than Kill that it when it was dog size. Bigger than a car, Way man. bigger than right? that dumb spider from Lord of the Rings. Fucking Tell you that. Just terrifying. bigger muscles, more masculine, cooler voice. The whole thing, the whole thing. I guess. More, I more legs. Uh, of course, Aragog's <laughs> like, listen, we, I, I, I'm not the beast. We didn't open the chamber. Hagrid didn't open the chamber. What, the, the beast that's in there is something that's ancient, and us spiders are terrified of it. Uh, so it's not us. Uh, but guess what? We're going to eat you. Yeah. Uh, there hey, you remember go. Remember the scary place you guys went? The Dark Forest from the last yeah. movie? Uh, go yeah. deeper. Follow spiders in it. Yeah. yeah. Just follow a lot of spiders, and then there's going to be bigger spiders, and then an even bigger spider. And then when you come out, there's going to be even more spiders. I'm <laughs> very... <laughs> Shut the hey, fuck up, bro. Bro, Jesus yeah. Christ, man. Bro, I'm to talk. Oh, he's a broken wand. Like, I get why I'm he's even bitch, more scared. Don't come. Um, Let Harry go himself. I'm really stoked to hear Cool Greg's opinion about this movie and to see how much this affected him. It didn't. No? He was cool with it. Spiders? Yeah. He was like, he hates spiders. Yeah. I, I got the Cool Greg. As I was watching this, I was like, how the fuck are you okay with this? Uh, of course, last second, the car the car comes back in. Uh, it was done partying. Or maybe it's on Molly. We don't know. Because it comes right in, slams <laughs> into a bunch of spiders. Ready to fucking party. <laughs> they get in. and uh, Randy's they, parents are back. <laughs> Sorry, Randy's parents came back for a second. Uh, it, it helps them escape. Of course, they're being uh, chased by a stampede of spiders. And as they get out of the forest, uh, finally uh, narrowly escaping death, uh, they once again get kicked out of the car. And the car just pieces back out into the forest. I love it so much. Do we ever really see the weird. car ever again? Who knows? I think we do. Right? Who knows? I can't remember. Um... Uh, 
They go to visit Hermione and Harry touches her hand again. And man, it's fucking just, it's just not sex like wrapped up in a robe. They're friends. It's all I'm saying. Yeah, uh, finds a crumpled up piece of paper in her hand. Uh, it has the definition of the basilisk. She, of course, figured out what was down there. We don't really know how. Crazy but it doesn't that no freaking one, matter. I mean, she just did research. Uh, she did research on things that, of course, uh, petrify things. She mm-hmm. didn't know what it was. And the ancient basilisk is known. If you look into its eyes, it petrifies you. Uh, it kills you, actually. Yeah. But if you don't, if you kind of indirectly see it, it petrifies you. And they go, wait, indirectly see it? How come? What happened? And they go through and go. Oh wait, Colin thought, saw it through the lens. Justin must have seen it through the um, through the ghost. Ref- the ghost. He saw it through nearly head- headless Nick. Uh, Mrs. Norris saw it through the reflection of the water because she was hanging up on the thing. Uh, so no one actually looked. Hermione at this thing. had the mirror. Hermione, of course, that had the mirror. She already figured it out. She's a smart kid. And this smart. is one of those things where I'm like, all right, this is simultaneously the coolest and lamest thing I've ever fucking heard. Because it's like, oh, that's actually kind of tight with the ca- like. They have cool ideas for how they're gonna hide it, but also. You figured this out? Like, it just makes everything feel like such bullshit. Where I'm like, there's She's no way. Sad. Like, they don't build they, it. Ron? Mm. No, I mean, they didn't, Harry. they didn't figure shit out. Yeah, Hermione had a paper that had all the information here's, on there. Okay, listen, like, here's uh, what it is. It was literally here's, like, Basilisk was circled. Pipes was written on the bottom. She wrote pipes on yeah. it. They're like, how does it get around? It, what's crazy pipes. is that no one was like, I should get some shit in her hand. Let's check it out. Well, again, you know? no one's going as deep in that hand as yeah, Harry is. Okay. Harry's trying to get deep in that hand. No. I'm just saying there's chemistry I, here, there's people. There's no chemistry. They're like 12 there. years old, dude. Platonic they don't know it yet, but there. that's hand job time. That is hand job time. That's foot job and hand job time. Jesus Christ. No, it's not God. foot job. Foot job is like, that's like a. <laughs> it's absolutely not. <laughs> way older thing. That's too far. That's a bridge too far. At least you know. Yeah, I do that one. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, and then they get they kind of figure it out, right? What if the girl fifty years ago who died in the bathroom never left the bathroom? It's moaning Myrtle. Uh, Professor McGonagall makes an announcement through the loudspeaker. Everyone go back to your rooms. A girl has been snatched by the monster, and that girl is Ginny Weasley. And they're like, oh shit, that's not good. Uh, they catch up with Professor Lockhart, but he is fucking bouncing. Man, he is a fraud. Because all the all the professors are like Lockhart, you can go. You know. You were just bragging the other day. You know where the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets is. You can take care of this and go save Jenny. He's like, no problem. And he's like, I just got to prepare some stuff. And he is bouncing yeah. because he's a fraud. I, we find I, out. I, I love that in the book after they like, oh, like, you know what to do. Like, we'll, we'll trust it to you. And right after he leaves in the book, McGonagall is like, now that we have him out of the way, let's actually get shit yeah, done. That's yeah, good, that's, good. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, Harry, uh, Harry and Ron go to assist him and they realize he's a fraud. He's but he's packing all of his shit. And they're like, you never did any of the shit that you claimed. And he's like, yeah, the only thing I'm really good at is memory charms i have i've stolen every wizard's like work i've taken credit for their work and then it just basically erased their memories which is really fucked up if you think really about fucked it up, there's a lot of wizards out there that just have no idea what the it, fuck's going it, like on. erased their memory forever yeah can't bring them back but and and like you see the way it affects people later he Not of course good. he of course tries to do this uh to them but they're Somehow. smart and they figured it out and they put their wands on him yeah. and then they kidnap him and take him up to the bathroom where they ask myrtle they're like hey myrtle what's up you were the dead girl that got carried out in that flashback that I saw. How did you die? She goes, well, I was up here because people were teasing me uh, about my glasses. And I heard a boy's voice and I looked out and then I was it. I was I just saw a pair of giant eyes, of giant reptile snake eyes, and then I died. And then Ron looks down at the little faucet, or Harry looks at the little faucet and sees a Slytherin sign, like a little snake sign. And he figures out this is the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets. Yep, they got it. And That's then the he one. says some stuff and he goes, why don't you just tell it to open? And he uses partial tongue and he tells it to open and it's just fucking cool. It's like he a cool like, partial <laughs> mouth. <laughs> like a transformer. And they're like, wow, that's a big hole. We don't want to go down first. So they just straight up kick Lockhart's ass into the hole. And he's stuff. like, it's really dirty down here, Mr. Potter. So they follow him down and they land on a bed of uh, skeletons, which is just the creepiest, scariest yeah, thing a ever. A lot of dead mice. A lot of dead mice. Well, that's what, uh, that's what a giant basilisk would eat. It actually is. I know. Uh, down in the caves, they find a giant snake skin. Uh, and of course, Lockhart uh, wrestles Ron's, uh, f- pretends to fake, like to faint, because he's terrified, and then wrestles Ron's wand away from him, not knowing Ron's wand is backfires. broken. Uh, tries to do the memory curse and backfires on him and wipes his memory out. And then Ron is like, This guy is fucking useless. I'm just going to give I'm him a concussion. Stone him in the head. <laughs> it just beats him over the head with a thing. Ron found someone more useless in him. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's true. <laughs> uh, let's see. Harry goes on a fight. I, guess, I think at one point the spell that backfired. Oh, that's right. The spell that backfired made the cave uh, yeah. cave in. And so uh, he goes, hey, man, try to try to dig some of this rock out. You can't get back up there. You're useless. I got to go on my own and go find Ginny. He comes to a fucking the dopest door ever. The snake door. 
Where he tells <laughs> he tells it to unlock, and the snake goes around and unlocks it as it reaches the other snake. So I'm like, cool. fucking everything about so Slytherin's cool. kind of cool. Yeah. I don't know why Kevin hates being in Slytherin so much. Yeah, I'm not That's in crazy. Slytherin. He is kind of cool. Yeah. Gryffindor was cooler though. Uh, comes to this amazing chamber that is lined with giant cobra heads, and at you the end that. of it, we see a giant statue of Salazar Slytherin's head. Uh, of course, Ginny is waiting there at the bottom, unconscious. And who should come around the corner? Tom motherfucking riddle but it's not tom riddle it's sort of the ghost of tom riddle mm -hmm. and uh, as jenny dies he's sucking her soul and he coming back to more life real in reality Less becoming more real like uh not transparent you know and what he's saying? like i'm a memory is what he said and he's like you know after after i unleashed all this shit back in the day dumbledore wouldn't let me fucking go he wouldn't keep his eyes off of me so i had to lock a part of myself into this diary forever just in case and you'll realize the significance of that a lot longer later from now mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. but uh, no but sense, and he's yeah. like He's like, I want to continue Salazar Slytherin's work. And then Harry's like, why do you want to kill Mudlugs? And then immediately he's like, you know what? I actually don't want to do that. I just want to come back to life is what I want to do. Um, I'm not interested in killing Mudbloods. Now I want to kill you, Harry Potter. And he goes, why do you want to kill me? He goes, because how is it a fucking boy with no power whatsoever could have defeated the Dark Lord, Voldemort? He's like, what do you fucking care about Voldemort? He, he's nothing to you. He goes, he's everything to me. He is my past, my present, and my future. And then he goes, of course, I am. And he's like, Tom Riddle forms, I am Voldemort. Which so is fucking cool. Lord yeah. dun, bum, bum, bum. It was stupid. I I loved it. It was so cool. When great. I watched it, I was like, oh, I remember that's the riddle. As I, a kid, I thought it was cool. Yeah, reading it in the book, I was like, man, that's like really cool. But yeah, even as a kid sure. watching it in the movie, I was like, because it took this is kind of dumb. Here's why it was cheesy, because it took forever for him to write it Yo, out. Yeah, let me yeah. make it better right. for you. Let me make it better yeah. for you. In order to make Tom Marvalo Riddle's name a proper anagram of I am Lord Voldemort in foreign languages, translators had to change his name to make sense. In French, his name became Tom Elvis Judasor. <laughs> <laughs> which became Jesus Voldemort. <laughs> That's great. That's, That's great. That's pretty good. That's she pretty just good. kept it in Jesus English. Uh, of course, uh, he was like, I, I, "I'm Lord Voldemort. I'm the. I'm going to be the greatest, power, most powerful sorcerer on the fucking planet." And Harry's like, "Fuck you, dude. Dumbledore is the greatest sorcerer in the world. He'll never, uh, you know, he'll never be as good as, as long as people are, you know." He, You'll never get anything as long as people are loyal to Dumbledore. He shows his unbelievable loyalty to Dumbledore for no reason, really, because he's only really talked to Dumbledore like three times. But it's cool. We like him. He got the little chocolate box of Dumbledore in it. You yeah. know, when you're a kid and you get the baseball card, and you're like, I'm going to be a fan this of this is my team favorite now. I love, yeah, I love Tony Gwynn. Uh, just then the Phoenix comes in and drops off, which I think was the sorting hat. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Because it didn't really talk. You'd think this wedding had to like go left. Yeah. Yeah. But it so he has like, fuck, give me out of here. Give me out of here. Oh, <laughs> shit. That's a big snake. That's a big snake. Uh, I got a job to do, guys. <laughs> Tom calls in the basilisk and Harry runs away uh, before he gets a chance to, to, to attack Harry. Of course, the phoenix blinds it. So now Harry can actually look its way it's without cool, getting petrified or killed, which is cool. But it's still, like, basilisk is a fucking billion pounds and Harry's just a tiny little kid. Harry outsmarts it, gets back to the main chamber, uh, looks down and sees, like as he's talking to Tom, looks down and sees a sword, grabs the sword as the basilisk starts to attack him. He climbs, he scales the face of Salazar Slytherin and then just fucking stabs that thing right in the mouth. This just is another scene mouth. that reminds me a lot of the kind of final set piece in Sorcerer's Stone, the chess thing, where I'm like, oh shit, this is kind of tight. And he gets up there to fight him. Like, oh yeah. And then he starts swinging. I'm like, Harry, <laughs> stab it. Like, Harry, stop he's it. blind. You're not blind. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what are you What are you doing? What are you, at? you can imagine you slice at scales. Like, that's going to happen. He was right? slicing it, and it wasn't going. Yeah. It looked like so, he was kind of just... Well, he's also, he's also, yeah. a also like, let's give you a sword. Oh, no I see you select like something. Like, it's not a wand, saying. you know? Yeah. <laughs> he, hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't had the popping oh, yet. Oh, Lord. He hasn't yeah. popped yet, so he doesn't have his, the testosterone going through his tochinos. Uh, so he, he goes, fuck, I, this Chino. is not working. Me, me slashing at this thing is not working. Nah, not I'm just going to stab this thing through the top of the mouth into its brain. And that kills the basilisk, but unfortunately, <laughs> one of the fangs uh, slams into Harry's arm as well. <laughs> And uh, snaps off into Harry's arm. The basilisk falls down to the ground dead. But unfortunately, uh, as Tom points out, that 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 venom from the uh, the basilisk happens fast, man. It's going to be about a minute, and then you're going to die. And uh, Harry's, Harry's like, weirdly peace, at peace with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he does, he, do? he does talk fun. about it in the book. He's like, oh, if this is dying. It actually isn't that bad. Yeah. Because, I mean, also the basilisk, a lot of people don't know, basilisk venom is what the yeah. cars were partying on in the fucking in the, dust, <laughs> yeah. in the dark forest. They're just like, I'm no, 12, I've had a hand right. job, foot job, I've had everything. They they off I don't really mean the paint threshold, I just mean like, you know, no, yeah, the, to terms the concept of, of going away forever. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, at this, at this point, 12 year old kid he's, is just he's like, lived a miserable <laughs> life. 
that he has he's not hated. had much joy. You know, he's he, had two years of like a lot of fucked up shit happening to him that he doesn't really understand, and he's just like. All right, whatever. So maybe Fuck I'm it. the like, problem. It was a good fight. His would be girlfriend is petrified. He lives under but, the stairs. He, he killed his owl about two hours ago. But that's why he's girlfriend. a Gryffindor because he doesn't mind because he knows at the end of the day if he sacrifices himself for the something greater good. Is for the greater good. Something if, will if be If he done. just died here, there would have just been one more book and it would have just been called Hermione Granger figures it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hermione Granger, the brains of the operation. <laughs> what I love, by the way, is that they utilize the Professor X strategy with Hermione, where they're like, well, if Hermione stays in her, she's way too OP'd, yeah. so we gotta take her out. Take her get out. her in a coma. Captain uh, Marvel's on different uh, planets yeah. right now. Yeah, 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 we gotta go over there. Uh, of course, Tom says, who would have thought all this from one little book? And Harry gets the bright idea. He's like, oh, the oh, book is the, the source book. of your power, motherfucker. You think so? Takes that fang and just stabs that book. And stab, it squirts stab, out stab. ink, which I think Scaring is Scaring the so shit cool. out of every cool. little kid that went to watch this movie. Just cool. gushing ink like, like it's blood, but it's black My ink. little brother was terrified. Also, he was... How, when did this movie come out? 2002. 2002. Yeah, he was two. He was two. Yeah, it's really scary. Even scary know. So. Tom, of course, is like, oh smart. shit. So I, no one figured this out. Uh, he uses the, 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 the fang venom. It makes him explode into a ball of light. And, and just fiery fucking torture. Uh, and Ginny wakes up and looks at Harry, and she's just like, oh man, that my crush saved my life, and he's gonna uh, give his life for me. That is the sexiest thing ever. And Harry's like, it's cool, Ginny. I'm cool. cool it's all Ginny. cool. And then Fox comes back, and he's like, oh, Fox, I was just a little... He's like, you Fox? were brilliant. Fox is the phoenix? Fox. Fox. Fox? Fox. It's Fox. Fox? You're Who fine. gives a Fox? fuck? How do you spell it? F-A-W-K-E-S. <laughs> no, it isn't. Isn't it with an X? No, it doesn't matter. The fox, fox, dude, fox, it's fox. Jean Grey comes back and, and comes <laughs> down, and he goes, "You were brilliant. I was just a little too slow, which is sad." Mm -hmm. And uh, then it's like, "That's yeah, not sad because I'm gonna start crying on you, and yeah. the crying makes yeah. everything better." Now, why they don't mind this thing for the polyjuice potion and all that you shit? You don't understand. Making not, a the phoenix sad stuff? is one of the most like painful things you can do. <laughs> I don't know. As opposed to like bursting into fucking flames. <laughs> uh, fixes Harry and then uh, flies them all out. And I love this scene because it's all of them holding on to each other. Totally unrealistic, but it reminds me of the cover of the this Goonies. so stupid. And Lockhart's it's like, amazing. This is amazing. Like, he's just the <laughs> nicest so guy now because he's so daffy. Well, he's all forgot. Yeah, he forgot everything going on. Uh, you know, fun fact about him. He spends the rest of his life in the hospital. Yeah. With no memory of anything. Uh, uh, yeah. Really sad. <laughs> Why didn't the Phoenix just fly him uh, to Mordor in the first place? Okay. I don't get I mean, it. You think the Phoenix could have just taken care of the basilisk, right? Dude, I, mean, I would give you all the points if I was a professor, man. <laughs> Where's Professor McGonagall? Yeah, where the, the fuck, fuck she at? Oot and boot, as they say in Canada. Uh, they go back to Dumbledore's office, and Dumbledore starts chewing him out. Giving him, but then he's like, you know what? I'm also going to give you a special award because that's how Are, we do it here. Do, does this last every goddamn movie? Yeah. It's hey, you did guys, a lot of you know, up a lot. But, but, but you're point, also the grand kind of, prize winner. There you go. It's like, all right. It was pretty badass what you did. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty I mean, it they was. Killed they the killed snake. the giant snake. Snake. Yeah. Let me tell you this way. If Kevin comes in and he's like, dude, you will not believe what I did this morning. And I'm like, what? And he takes me out back and there's a giant fucking tremor from the movie Tremors, like a giant snake back there that he killed. I'm like, here's a special reward. Pokeball. Which as long as eight. as long as us adults ha don't have to figure shit out and these twelve year olds can do everything for us, <laughs> go like fuck yeah, get all these. I don't give a fuck about these points, dude. Forty uh, for you, eighty for you. Everyone doesn't matter. Like I don't do shit. Yeah. <laughs> I sit back in my dope recliner, my <laughs> pimp lounge upstairs. Uh, he sends Ron to go deliver a, an owl to Azkaban to get Hagrid uh, out, which you would think Ron's not authorized to do, but Ron's like, fuck it, I'll try. I guess I'll write a note. We'll see how that works. Uh, thanks, Harry, for showing him real loyalty down in the chamber. Nothing uh, could have had the Phoenix go to you except for that real loyalty. Uh, and he's like, I think something's troubling you. And Harry's like, I can't help but notice that there's a lot of similarities between me and uh, Voldemort. And that's because he goes, well, that's because Voldemort probably transferred some power to you when he tried to kill you that night. Uh, he gave you that scar. It's not intentional, but it's just something that happens when a curse that powerful hits you and you survive. And he's like, oh, that's cool. That's how I can speak snake. And he's like, yeah, he's like, hey, maybe you could have fucking told me that last year. Maybe just sit me down and tell me all the shit you know about me and help me fucking doesn't matter. Then we wouldn't have stories. They wouldn't have stories. Oh, they wouldn't drop the ring of the thing. Oh, the ring. Anyway. <laughs> what? Why did I become goes, a Lord well, of the Rings? And he's, like, <laughs> and he's like, shouldn't I have been Slytherin? And he goes, well, you weren't Slytherin. And he goes, you know why? And Harry goes, because I asked not to be. And he goes, exactly. It's not about your abilities. It's about what you choose to do with those abilities mm. that makes you a Gryffindor. Mm. And that's what defines you. Mm. And I love that. Because he's like, yeah, you could have been a Slytherin. Great. If you wanted to do bad, we would have put you in Slytherin. And you would have been great. You, you would have been, been like, like Voldemort. Yeah. You would have been like Kevin. It's not uh, funny. It's literally the conversation that he's having is about the opposite you thing. You chose not to. And choice is more powerful than than, than destiny, yeah. uh, which is important. And he has and he also goes, a great moment. 
He goes, if you don't believe me, look at the look at the name on that sword. And he looks at the sword that he drew out of the the sorting hat, and it's the sword of Godric Gryffindor. And only oh. a really true Gryffindor oh. could have pulled that fucking thing out of the hat. I also love that it's like the magic, the thing out of the hat. Yeah, yeah they're right. magicians. Magicians. Just then, Dobby comes in with Musicians. none other than Lucius Malfoy. Oh my God, you serve the Malfoys. Who would have seen that coming? Uh, and then Dumbledore straight up threatens Lucius, being like, I hope none of uh, Voldemort's old shit finds its way in here again. Wink, wink. I know you fucking did it, motherfucker, but I can't mm -hmm. prove it. Uh, and that's where we get the line. Uh, well, let's hope Matt, Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. And Harry goes, don't worry, I will. God. Well, he's not sure if he can, but he's like, uh, uh, I, I mean, just killed a giant snake. Fuck you, Blondie. Yeah. Like, I probably should have died in that cave. But yeah. <laughs> I, I, at this Eagle point, he's me. beaten Voldemort twice, right? Like, he he's full on. Uh, one time he melted the dude. The other time he stabbed a book to death. Yep. Like, that's impressive. It was three yeah. times then, right? He's got a good resume. That is oh, well, yeah, with the, the, the baby one, that was his mom. Of course, Harry chases after Lucius and gives him the diary back and says, here, I believe this belongs to you. And he's like, that doesn't belong to me, and hands it to Dobby. And then Harry's like, open it. Now, again, a technicality. Because he didn't yeah. know he was giving him the doesn't sock. Matter. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But it's Harry not gave it to him, him changed sock. ownership. You just give him clothing. Yeah. Of course, he gave uh, Dobby the sock, and Dobby's like, fuck it, I'll take the technicality. Absolutely. I am free. Dobby's free, and nothing's gonna, nothing ever bad's gonna happen for the rest of the series because of this freedom. And it's not, so it's totally Let's fine. Let's just move We're on. We're gonna please, be happy. Stop. The production designer uh, made Harry shave his leg for that scene because he was <laughs> all hairy as fuck. Yeah, hairy leg? Harry. Oh, a, again, puberty strikes at the at the legs first, it didn't and then moves see, up yeah. to the. <laughs> 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 oh, what's up, Harry? Uh, Do you Dobby's, guys not love this scene? I love this scene so much. Well, Dobby's free, and then of course, uh, to, to because he's pissed because he lost his house. Hey, he's like, "You lost me my house elf. I'm going to literally cast the killing curse on you." Start saying the uh, what, how, what is it, Barrett? Avada, Avada Kedavra. Kedavra. Avada Kedavra. Yeah. Kedavra. And at this point, I'm like, yo, you just trying to kill a student? Yeah. Because I was Dumbledore, but like, you're going to fucking Azkaban, bro. But of course, Dobby showing the house elves, if they want to, will fuck you up because their magic is way better than wizards. Mm -hmm. Just just blasts him. And he's like, move on, homie. Move on. Uh, later, of course, Hermione is unpetrified. And that's great. Uh, Harry and her have a nice little look. And again, just like a nuclear fucking reaction, the heat between these two nah, kids is friends. just, is they're just friends. Catch, a platonic catch, relationship. Catch, yeah. Yeah. He's friends. Okay. They want to. Uh, then Ron, of course she walks up to Ron and Ron's like, I don't know what to do with women and shakes her hand. And it's like, well, you're an idiot. Uh, Dumbledore. What's up? Is, are you talking, is this the scene in the great hall? In the great hall. Yeah. yeah. So weird thing here. Uh, in the original script, Hermione was supposed to hug both Harry and Ron in the final scene. However, the then 11-year-old Emma Watson was embarrassed about having to hug boys in front of the entire cast. So director Chris Columbus changed it so she only had to hug Harry and then chicken out of hugging Ron. Even then, she broke the hug with Harry too quickly, and the film had to be frozen for a few seconds to make the hug seem longer than it was. Whoa. Oh, that's, that's funny. Little kids are weird, man. <laughs> Uh, like, this is embarrassing. Man, I don't feel dedicate like... yourself to the role, Emma. Jesus right? Christ. Uh, <laughs> Dumbledore, paid a bunch for this, dude. Dumbledore makes an announcement. Due to all the, the shit that's gone down, people almost dying and all this stuff, all exams have been canceled, and everyone in the school loses their shit, except for Hermione, who's like, oh, man, that sucks. Because yeah. <laughs> he was looking forward to those. What that was fucking nice kind of school are they run in here? So, uh, you know, like, you know what? Hey, we, just all, we solved some shit. Hey, no school. Mm -hmm. This ain't a school. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're the cool school. Once, ag once again, these year. fucking kids save the day. Let you know, no tests, no tests. Yeah. At uh, this point, Harry should be like, I should be fucking running this school, yeah. bro. <laughs> I think I got what it takes, bro. Yeah. Because you are flying by the seat of your pants, and I am too. <laughs> you put the dumb in Dumbledore. Uh, uh, of course, uh, just Dumbledore. then, Hagrid <laughs> yeah. comes back. Who should come back into the Great Hall but Hagrid really himself. He has been released from Asking Man. Would have probably been a little earlier, but some cheap-ass owl fucking got lost on the way there. Man, uh, Ron, get your shit together. Hey, don't, why, don't use the, uh, the don't use school your has owl. owls. Yeah, <laughs> don't use, use yours. Owls. Uh, he then, offers a tearful thanks to the gang for getting him out of Azkaban. And Harry goes, listen, man, there's no Hogwarts without you, Hagrid. And the entire school and is like, you know. slow clap Hagrid. God. Yeah. Why? Because it's Hagrid's so the weird. G. He went to prison for them, yeah, bro. Yeah, people love Hagrid. But I mean, like, it just. It I, was a literal slow clap. Well, the Dumbledore it, it was was around. So it was the Dumbledore starts slow clapping. You start clapping, bro. Doesn't I, matter for I what. I get it. It's and just, all the other kids like, why are we clapping? Like, what is yeah, going on? That like, moment like, was hey, not Hey, have you been briefed on what these kids did and how he's involved? And he went to jail. and now he's like. We've yeah. already established in the first Harry Potter that if there's a big secret, everyone knows it. Well, mm. in the in the when he wakes up, oh, was, that the, was that the first one? Where, the first where one where he Dumbledore wakes up, he's like, like, of course, what you did down there was, was, was a huge secret. So naturally, everyone in the schools knows. We just word gets around. Yeah. These are kids. I okay? just thought it was, it was a knows. weird movie moment. That's like, it's like, are you guys just trying to like have the 
a new hope they scene. Needed, they needed a big moment so that we could pull out all the way through the glass and see Hogwarts for one final time. And uh, this, the film ends, and Fucking that's it. Music yes, starts going. Yes, of course, we don't get the house cup in this one, which is just a travesty. Nobody gives a shit. It's bullshit. Nobody gives a shit. Who cares? Just like uh, this. That's all. Just so everyone knows, the current point rankings are as follows: uh, Ravenclaw with thirty points total. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that sounds wrong. Thanks to Nick and Andy. And uh, the Kevin Dursley at a negative five points. Yep. Wow. Uh, so what a shame. Really thanks quick, did you guys negative. did you guys catch the after credit scene, which is the only after credit scene in this entire? It was no. an Azkaban no. reference, right? Uh, like no. So it's wanted uh, poster. It, it uh, pans down, oh, and it's right. um, it's, a cell it's broken out, right? It's uh, Borgen and Burks, which is the or uh, whatever the bookstore is, and it pans down, and it's another Gilderoy Lockhart book, and it's just him looking confused on the cover, and the title of the book is "Who Am I?" and it's really funny and uh, cute, and it's the only it's the only post credit scene uh, of the entire movie franchise. Uh, I tried that. getting cool. to it because I, I passed by it when I was fast forwarding. I was like, oh, post credit, let me go back. And I rewound, and then I pass it again, and I fast forward, and I pass it again because the voodoo <laughs> thing is like, you know, it's either you're going forward one second or <laughs> 80 seconds, <laughs> and then I just gave up. And I thought it was like, I thought it was a wanted poster. The, you could have just uh, yeah, I yeah. thought it was a it, serious of It kind of looks like a wanted yeah. poster, quickly. Uh, Woody <laughs> Allen corrects me in the chat. Flores and Blotch is the uh, store that I'm thinking of. Thank you. Hey, Woody. Uh, the last couple chamber. Chamber of facts that I have for you is uh, <laughs> uh, Daniel Radcliffe was initially only offered one hundred and eighty-one thousand dollars for the film. The Actors Union Equity stepped in and was like, "Nah, bruh." Uh, so they negotiated new terms that increased his salary to roughly three million dollars. Wow! Wow! Kids oh. made a lot of money off this series. And uh, I, I didn't write this one down. I probably should have. But uh, there was somebody that was like. Um, some well-known actor guy that was like, I'm not going to be in this movie. This fucking 12-year-old's getting paid for more than me. And then he wasn't. Well, suck it up, man. Um, Richard Harris, who was Dumbledore, died a few weeks before the film's release. Producer David Heyman went to visit Richard Harris in the hospital, and despite being weak from illness, he insisted that the role of Dumbledore not be recast. Whoa. <laughs> God, so Sadly, sad. he died, and they had to recast. What the fuck, Richard Harris? <laughs> I mean, what was, was he, sad. What was his like, hey, 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 angle? Right <laughs> about. Then, then there's more. Uh, Sir Ian McKellen, who I always thought was Dumbledore. <laughs> what? It's in, Gandalf. In the later, because I never saw the movies. Uh, and like, okay. that I, I don't know. I always thought that he took on the role after. Apparently, he didn't. Uh, Sir Ian McKellen has said that he could never have taken the role of Professor Dumbledore in the Harry Potter films Gosh. after the death of Richard Harris because he knew that Harris disapproved of him as an actor. What? <laughs> what is going on in this? Case? Community. Richard Harris is a dick. What the fuck, Richard Harris? <laughs> what a weird community. Well, but also, Lord, like, the Lord of the why Rings do you movies, care? Well, the Lord of the Rings movies were out at this point, right? Or had started to roll out? 2002, I believe. So they had already yeah, been out. So yeah, because everyone was like, why don't you just cast... This is 2002, too. Mm. I remember there being an upswell of people being like, we should cast Ian McKellen as, as Dumbledore. Because he, he already knows how to be a wizard. And everyone's like, that's too confusing, bro. <laughs> He has a long beard. It'll look the same. Lord of the Rings so started. I'm glad they didn't. It's a different kind of wizard. But it's interesting because the next guy they got had such a different vibe. We'll see such that when we get to Azkaban. But yeah. man, he is so much more like so much dark better. and sharp. Like like Richard. I, what I always love about Richard Harris is that he has like that grandfatherly yeah. appeal to him. Mm. The new Dumbledore is like is like the old guy that never had kids and is still driving around in his Ferrari. And you're like, yeah, what's going on, dude? What have you been doing? What have you been doing? Well, what you been doing? All right, let's have a little boss baby book corner with Barrett. Who are you? Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> what a weird thing. We don't have a theme song yet. I'm sorry. Do you you came like, up with one last week. Yeah, why don't we have Ragu Bagu? We can do that after Boss Baby. No, Book because Battle. we decided it was like it's always Voldemort, pretty much. We can, we, Barrett, give us the thing. Who are you? <laughs> ba Boss Baby Book Corner. Boss Baby. Who are you? Boss Baby Book Corner. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me like I'm completely different theme from last week. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Boss Baby's Book Corner, a podcast within a podcast where I share the most important details from the Harry Potter books that were cut from the movies. My name is Barrett Courtney, and this week we will be talking about Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. One thing I wanted to mention last week that I uh, that I forgot <coughs> naturally uh, to keep this segment as short and tight as I can, uh, especially with the later movies uh, with the longer books. I can't get to every detail, uh, obviously, that they cut from the movie. 
movies. So again, I implore you to talk about your favorite details that I can't get to in the comments below. Uh, just understand that. But also keep in mind the uh, few to you know hold off on future spoilers in the uh, comments and whatnot for the people who are uh, get in there. Uh, for the people who are watching this for the first time, like Tim. Don't be like Nick. Avoid future spoilers. Anyway, let's talk about Chamber of yeah. Secrets, which comes in at 341 pages. Like I said earlier, a nice afternoon read, like the first book. So it wasn't that hard for the movie to get all of the important stuff. So like last week, I'm going to get a little nitpicky, but uh, from here on out, I'll only get kind of nitpicky. Detail yes. number one in the movie, Hermione fixes Harry's glasses in Diagon Alley. Uh, she doesn't do that in the book because that shit's illegal. You can't perform magic outside of school. What are we? we what are we trying to paint Hermione as now in these movies? A fucking criminal? She's supposed Bullshit. to be Topanga. No rules, dude. Forget everything you know. Detail number two um, that I kind of just added. Uh, being reminded uh, during the middle of this episode. Uh, Mr. Weasley's job in the uh, Ministry of Magic is the misuse of muscle, misuse of muggle artifacts. So the fact that his car is magic is actually like a problem and is kind of illegal. Well, so mm. that's another reason why like he gets in trouble at work. Because so you're not so, supposed to use artifacts from the muggle world for different things? Yeah. Yeah, you're not so to, like, like, ma like... What Dobby does with that sock is wrong. Oh, yeah. God. Yes, it's very wrong. Uh, but Elf come. To be... Clear. He like so. He wrote the 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 law that uh, forbade he wrote, he anyone. He wrote like a loophole, basically. So he left a loophole so that he can experiment with cars and motorcycles. Yeah, but basically, it's like a <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, right. Detail number three no in weasels. the yeah. In the book, you learn that Mr. Filch, the caretaker of Hogwarts, is a squib who is a person who is born from magical parents but does not possess any magical like That's powers really themselves. So er Harry accidentally like finds this out and Filch catches him doing it. And so when uh, Mrs. Norris gets uh, attacked, Filch uses that as like proof of like he knows I'm a squib. That's why he's like coming after me when the first attack happens. Uh, also, uh, Filch kind of reminds me a lot of. The, Walter uh, Frey? Well, well, of course, Walter, he played Walter Frey, but the, uh, he reminds me a lot of the old creepy homeless guy in Dennis that. the Menace, the live action movie. Oh, Holy shit, yeah. Okay. I forgot who played that guy. Oh, it was a, a, a fucking Back to the Future. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lloyd. Uh, Lloyd. Uh, what's Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd, yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah. Detail number four. In the movie, when Harry and Ron take Polyjuice Potion, they still have their voices. In the books, however, the Polyjuice Potion changes your voice to the person that you're imitating. And it yeah. does in the I movies, too, later. But we'll I, I, I don't know why they made this change. I, I, felt like yeah. I, I felt like they were like, oh, let's have it be goofy where like, they have to pretend to be Grab and Goyle, but I don't know why they made dumb. that change. Because Crab with Harry's voice was adorable. Uh, okay. But it was dumb. But and anyway, we're not they familiar don't... enough with Crab's voice for yeah. that to yeah. be like a weird shock. This is a Bulk and Scully. Any, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to bring this. I like specific. how you always say Scully. It's, it's just Skull. I, I'm going to bring this detail up uh, once or twice more. So remember, put this in your head about Polyjuice. Get in that noggin. Or, yeah, Polyjuice potion uh, and X voices. Yeah, uh, detail number five. Uh, this is probably the most petty detail that I have in the entire series, but it drives me insane. In the movie, after the Basilisk is blinded by Fox the Phoenix, uh, Tom Riddle yells out, but the Basilisk can still hear you. But in the book, he says the Basilisk can still smell you. I don't know why the fuck they changed it. It's just like one of those... Dumb moments. Here's the I, know thing. They, I know why they did it, so I, Harry could throw the rock. In yeah, the that makes a lot more sense. Otherwise, the snake should have been able to eat him. Yeah, yeah. it should have been like. Well, otherwise, well, they don't Harry do would have farted. But they don't. <laughs> You're right there. They don't do that moment Jeez. in the book though, where he gets like cornered and shit, because it's more likely that the basilisk, even though the basilisk can hear him, whatever, he can still use his tongue to fucking. Even though if he hears something out of the corner, he still smells him with his fucking tongue. It makes no that, sense. At no point does the Fuck. basilisk do the little tongue thing. Uh, okay. Six and and then the the last uh, detail I have, I forget where they talk about this uh, in the book, but uh, the reason why you might be wondering, Tim. Mm -hmm. Why the fuck they would hire Gilderoy Lockhart? Because he's very incompetent. Yeah. But they talk about in the book at some point, like, no one wanted the job. No one was taking the job. So Gilderoy Lockhart was, like, the last opportunity to, like, get someone into the uh, position. Defensive dark arts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't yeah. Snape but, want that? No, yeah. no, no. Well, more importantly, um, he had done the memory wipe thing to mm. two of Dumbledore's friends. So Dumbledore, like, right. was going to catch him. Like, that was the plan. Mm. Uh, they don't talk oh. about that in the books at all, though. It's, that's some... Pottermore bullshit? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, Great. anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this week's episode of Boss Baby's Book Corner. What are some of the, your favorite details that I couldn't get to today? Leave them in the comments below. And while you're at it, why don't you give this video a like? Share with Just your friends like who it, love dude. Harry Potter Especially and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next week for another episode of Book Corner. But until then, eat slugs. Boss Babies Book Corner. Boss Babies.
He wrote the books. Sorry, I'm yeah, for a second. No, it was great. It was perfect. But okay. next time, I want like a little bit more of a whisper. Dude, he wrote the books. Do it again. <laughs> Boss Babies Book Corner. Boss Babies. He wrote the books. He wrote the books. He wrote the yeah. What's up? Can you give me this next one? <laughs> Man, I, I don't feel worthy. Spot. I don't feel worthy of making a theme song for Cool Greg because he's so much better than me. Okay, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Golden Stitches Get Stitches, the Cool Greg effect for the Harry Potter universe. Cool Greg, what do you think about Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Man, I liked it a lot. You got young Tom Riddle, Ghost, the Ghost of Voldemort. You got to fuck with that. The Ghost, <laughs> and then uh, we got Blood Graffiti. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. Yeah, right. Right. One of the most fucked yeah. up kind of graffiti. Yeah, I really fucked Blood with that. bombing, you know? That was about it. Ladies you, and gentlemen, you saw that wait, 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 real quick, cool The spiders didn't uh, didn't do anything? Fake spiders. I ain't scared of fake. That's like being scared of a security guard when I'm saying you're scared of the feds. You know? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, Kugler. And the quote Thank of the you. episode. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fake spiders must oh, like. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, do, do you want the ragu bagu dick? Da, da, Let me make da, you da, happy. Da, da, da. Ragu. Da, 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 da. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk, Bad Guys, a podcast within a podcast. My name is Andy Cortez, joined by my co host, Nick Scarfino. Yeah. 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 Oh, two Ravenclaws, you know yes. what I'm saying? Two Ravenclaws. Uh, so last episode we yeah, had just pivot. Dumbledore and the guy and Hat Guy. So we had Voldemort and Professor Quirrell. Hat Guy. Uh, that's that's number one right now. Yeah. So the question is, do we put uh, Tom Riddle and I'll go ahead and th- say Snake. this and Ginny Basilisk. Why Ginny? Oh, because she was because she was yeah, because she was a bad guy. No, no, she wasn't though. So I'll she say was ta- taking over. I'll say Riddle, yeah. Riddle, like, Ginny, and the Basilisk. Do we put them higher than Quarrel? My vote is for yes. I my think, vote is for yes, just because I, I thought better plan. Tom is a more uh, fascinating character, and he and, and he's th- this diary uh, was just a cool idea to to imprint your spirit in there, just in case, just in case. But also having his name like as a stupid anagram, pretty stupid, pretty no, dope. That's though. fucking cool. That was cool. Like yeah. he'd be a lot cooler. Yeah. If what could he make Andy Cortez, Cortez out of? Nothing. Cord- Zet- Zet- Crandy. Zetrak. Zetrak. <laughs> So yeah, I, I put uh, I put uh yeah I put the villains of Chamber of Secrets over Hat Guy and Voldemort. Tight, me too. You want to put that down as the name? Tom Elvis Jed- Jedusor. Yeah, we'll there put it is. That. Tom <laughs> Elvis Jusue Elvis Presley. What's his name? And that's it for Ragu Badu's, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, if you want to pay seventy thousand dollars, you can take <laughs> over the Ragu Bagu's uh, Twitter account, and I'll just keep saying that joke. I like it. I like I'm it Greg a lot. Miller. Now, uh, the final podcast within a podcast for today, Haiku in Review. Seven syllables in the middle, so many songs. <laughs> but the, the last line. Last line. If you're not poetic, no need to friend it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Er-wa, er-wa, er-wa. Haiku in Review. Haiku in Review. Everybody now stop. Ladies and gentlemen, you too can write in to patreon.com slash games to leave your haiku review of the different movies that we watch today. The nanobiologist writes in and says, the Richard Harris, you killed it as a Dumbledore. R.I.P. O.G. Wow. Wow. R.I.P. O.G. What a good use of syllables. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. uh, Fighting Wombat says, too many spiders. Too many the school spiders. needs to be shut down. Ron has a dumb face. <laughs> he does, Dude, man. That, that spider scene, man. That face was... Oh, a lot. I mean, he's a kid. The fuck he's a kid. Hey, I bet Harrison he's a control. kid with a dumb face. Right? Harry's got it together. He's a kid. Matt Edwards <laughs> says in the award, four. World's most incompetent twat. <laughs> Gilderoy Jesus. Lockhart. Oh, I think he was going to say okay, Ron Weasley. Yeah. Um, Nano about itself says 80 year old man corrupting and stoning kids. That's messed up, JK. It is messed up. I will up. say this about JK. Like, you know, very creative with her words and her and her syllables and her vowels and you, having a lot of creativity in naming things. I hate that. I hate Fred and George. What? Why? I hate. I wish it the was names. like. Fred and Frank are like well, so we got Ron, George and Fred, George, Percy. Like as the, the twins, I feel like it should uh, have Char- had some Charlie and Bill. Charlie and Bill. Yeah, they're just normal names. They bro. named a character yeah. Justin. Like Joey and Johnny <laughs> would have been cool. But to be Sweet. fair, his last name is like Fint Fletchley or something. Okay, there yeah. we go. There yeah. we go. And then the final one, uh J6 says, Lockhart, what the fuck? Defend these kids, you dumbass. No one talks to ghosts? Question mark. Good question, man. <laughs> no one talks to ghosts. I like, when, the like ghosts nobody talked to Monty Myrtle. She would have been like, yeah, I was having a lot of information. But I the thing about the ghosts is they don't goss. give a fuck. 
They don't care. Headless yeah. Nick. Yeah. They're ghosts. Again, they're like, I can't be killed twice. Why would yeah. I give a shit what happens in the human yeah. world? I'm dead. How do you think they gave him the uh, the Mandrake juice? John Drake juice. But nearly Headless yeah. Nick? Yeah. He squirted it all over him. Yeah, I just hope that yeah. it works. They just like, because you can't grab him, so they just like splash. No, I, I think he, like, in the book, they say he, like, naturally heals up because he's just a ghost, so he just, like, Kind so he was like, just faking the whole time just, for no, attention. No, not faking. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, next week I'm we will be ghost. watching Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Are you guys ranking? Oh yeah, we have to. Oh rank. yeah. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> God damn this show! How many shows within the show are and there? And, 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 and again, I don't have a rank yet because I don't do that until, yeah, until yeah, week yeah. three. So the current rankings right now is just Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Where do we rank this one? Anyone want to start a conversation? I have this blow sorcerer's stone. I just found it a little bit, a little bit less enjoyable. I enjoyed the world building of part one uh, more. I enjoyed uh, that uh, Hermione was a lot more uh, part of the present. Team the first yeah, one. yeah. I, I enjoyed that her dynamic with the dudes, with the two dudes. I think I, I could go either way, but I'm inclined to agree. I think sorcerer's stone for me is the is the more fun movie because it's the entry into the world. It's a lot of world building. It's the we get to see this beautiful thing that J.K. Rowling has has made through Harry's eyes, and in this one, it's a little darker. Uh, it drags a little bit, and I do think that some of the information is like, what happens next? What happens next? Like, there's not a, there's there's not a lot more depth to it other than that. And if it was just a standalone movie, I'd be like, this is great. But since we kind of had that same structure in the Sorcerer's Stone, I think this is a little bit of a rehashing. So I put this just a little bit below Sorcerer's Stone. I think I'm in that same boat where it's like I still enjoyed it. Yeah, mm. like I think that this does a lot. Like grand scheme, like when you look at it, when we're the series is done, you're gonna be like, oh, cool. But um, right now, it's just like, oh, this is cool. I like it, but the first one has a lot more Christmas in it. You know what I mean? And that does for whatever reason and Halloween. so yeah. much more for me. Yeah, well, Hogwarts or Halloween, man, it's a party. Although I, this did have the uh, Dark Forest rave scene, so. <laughs> and the related scenes with the cars. <laughs> Yo, pass the bass with his blood. <laughs> Could you imagine if you went to the dark forest and just saw a circle of cars just <laughs> fucking honking at each other, like having a good time? Rolling on Molly. Jesus. And shit. Pass Christ. the bass with um, his blood. I thought the, the highs in this one were higher and the lows were lower. And I thought the first one kind of was like fine the entire way through. So even with that, I feel like I'd put the first one over this one because cool. it's just like there was enough stuff in this. That I'm like, I, it felt like a step back for what I want the franchise to turn into. Sure. But I still have high hopes, very high hopes for the Prisoner of Azkaban. Cool, Greg. Wh where would you rank Chamber of Secrets? I'll put or this one number one. Chamber Chamber of Secrets over Sorcerer's Stone. So the ranking is Cool Greg thinks number two is better. The rest of us think number one is better. Correct. That's so the new rankings are. Number one, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. <laughs> Number two, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Next week, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Can't fucking yeah. wait. Yeah. Do the Until music. Next time. Do the music. Um, there is no music. No, but just, you know. Wingardium Adiosa is the. Oh, is it? You don't yeah. do that?